where's the where's the little Martian? I miss the Martian. Like, you want the Martian? I want the Martian, dude. You want the Martian? <laughs> Thank you. Now I in feel honor, in honor of Hojo. Yes, oh, in honor of Hojo, we have the Martian. You play the Martian. Yeah. Coming Mar Martian and stuff. What is up, everyone? Miércolesazos, which is not Domingazos because Domingazos is on Sunday nights and this is Wednesday nights, okay. which I don't understand. Whatever. Anyway, huh. I am your almost Mr. Happy Harry Hardon, aka Cryptozoologist to the Stars, Slam Poet Extraordinaire, all that other great stuff. And uh, who's on with me tonight? We have special guests, of course. We'll get to that in a second. Go ahead, sir. Hey, this is Oliver Lee. I just said code name only 656. How's it going, guys? Hojo, welcome. Welcome to the show. Welcome, sir. Thanks welcome. Please me. introduce yourself, sir. Uh, well, I'm Hojo, in case people don't know who I am by now. I'm an indie comics creator. I'm kind of in the horror vein at the moment. Um, just got tired of reading terrible comics. Decided to <laughs> dust off an old idea. Saw crowdfunding going on with all you cats. And I was like, yeah, I'll give it a shot. It's working out pretty good so far. Nice. That is awesome, man. Yeah, we've been watching you like slowly like crawl your way out of all the <sighs> other crap that's out there and really like come into into being, man. So that's awesome, bro. Yeah, it's still kind of surreal that like people are like, oh, he's a creator. I'm like, mm. or he's a writer. I'm a more <laughs> of a I'm a storyteller. You it's, know? it's it's been battle royale with Hojo, no? Like shooting off other comp other comic <laughs> creators and shit. Yeah, I'm, I know. I'm, it's like Yosemite set. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, uh you just See, you know, if you're not given the gifts, you have to work twice as hard. Oh, hell yeah, man. You know, yeah. like I'm not a natural athlete, so, but, uh, you know, I made a freshman baseball team or a uh, varsity baseball team because I outworked everybody. I didn't stop. I don't stop. Like uh, if I try to, if I don't know something, I'll learn it. Um, I just, I have, I was in the military, so I have that eternal drive. Like it doesn't, like the mission. Of course, the goal. Like mm -hmm. I will get there, but I'm not going to say any means necessary, but any available avenue that I can um, travel myself, or you know, with some help. But you know, kind of forge my own path, see what works. You know, study a little bit of this, a little bit of that, marketing, being able to talk to people helps. You know, comics people aren't the most extroverted people. You know, especially yeah. like the writers. Like they're not like like you go to a convention, you could tell who the writer is and who the artist is. Yeah. This kid talks a lot, by the way. He's very yeah, open. yeah. <laughs> he's, very, he's very personable and yeah. Like I was an only <laughs> child, so like I made that's that's how I you know I read a lot, and but I had to entertain myself, man. Like looking at comedians and stuff, and just like <laughs> making people laugh. It's it's one of the best joys in the world, you know. And and I'll, I'll sprinkle a little bit of that in my books. I can't help it. See, that's good, man. Yeah, I mean, that's the perfect icebreaker. If you make people laugh, then you know they feel more comfortable around you. Yeah, that's that's the way to go, man. That's awesome. That's what cool what branch of the military were you in? I was in the army. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I spent some time at Fort Bliss actually. We really? To, oh, really? Yeah, wow. we used to go to El Paso uh, once a month to take oil samples. Oh, wow. Weird. Yeah, it was dumb. And then I had to do PLDC there, which is like a training course uh, to be a like NCO, like a sergeant. Did, oh, nice. did did you ever hit the comic shops during? No, uh, I, I might have. I know I had I had a uh, an adult dancing establishment called Jaguars more than once. <laughs> that just closed down, sir. They just they were doing illegal activities and they just shut it down last week. So oh, last week they shut it down. Yeah, wow. last week they shut it down. Well, yeah. Perfect timing, dude. Mm -hmm. No, dude. I, I mean, I, there's a ton of comic shops no? around Fort Bliss. Like what? Five? There used to be. There yeah, used, used to be. be. Yeah. Now there's like three, maybe two or three at the most. And not so very good anymore. I was, talking, I was, uh, I was sorry, stationed out of uh, Fort Huachuca, which is like uh, in Nogales. It's, it's the border with Nogales in Arizona. Yeah. So, uh, like, and there was a comic shop literally ten feet out of the gate. Oh wow. Ran, ran by a former soldier, so like that was even you know cherry. You know, oh, you know, like Captain cool. America original art and stuff like that it was good. That is cool. I don't know if we we connected with them. You know what? That reminds me. I was talking to uh, Hector uh, Rodriguez. Uh, he does the Peso Hero, and he was telling me that uh, one of the shops, one of his shops where he lives by, is shutting down. And mm. I think they carried the Criminals book. It was Carpe Diem 
comics. Oh, really? Wow. They're, they're shutting down because of money issues. They can't keep up. And it sucks because we were discussing that. And I was mentioning like, yeah, there used to be like 12, 15 shops in El Paso. And now there's maybe like five or six at the most. And it and sucks. Lucky. You know? I mean, you were lucky at one time. My, like my local, my hometown is about 10 minutes from here. Mm-hmm. That comic shop ended in 93. Oh, so you had to go 30 miles either direction to find a comic shop. Oh, man. But, like, the one that's in the town I work in, he's a creator too. So mm-hmm. like he, he's, he's kind of helped me with, you know, you know, the little crowdfunded thing and like who did contact like a printer and, you know, yada, 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 the process and he trying to prep me for a convention, but he, uh, he's, he bought it a couple years ago and has turned it around where it's like way more prop. It's actually profitable. Oh, wow. The first thing he said, he's like, you know what I did? He said, look around. You see any Funko Pops? I was like, you mean Junko Flops? <laughs> and he was like, Adam. they're gone, baby. They're gone. I didn't say that, by the way, for all yeah. you Funko. <laughs> no, no, no. But he just, know, like, he's he's like, this is a comic shop. The people that come in here buy comics. And, like, and there's a wall for the manga, no? Yeah. Uh, he's got a section, but okay. he pushes comics. Like nice. Western comics, which oh, nothing wrong with manga. I just don't read it. I just never did. It's not my, you know. I'm, I would branch out, but I just got so much shit to do. Like I saw your book at uh, yeah. a local shop. So yeah, I, I remember you had, yeah. you had posted. About I was that. like, I was yeah. like, I looked at, it, I was like, cryptic. Like I, the guy I was with, I was like, that's the six five six guys. He's like, yeah, I know. I was like, he's like, I already got it. I was like, well, I'm getting it. Nice. So, um, <laughs> nice. But that's just, uh, it, it's commendable, man, that you guys are doing that and you don't have to complain about, you know, anything except for, you know, paper well, shortages or paper we, prices. We, we have plenty <laughs> to complain about, yeah, but we I, just kind of suck it up and learn from it and move on, you know? Exactly, uh, man. Like, I'm not going to harp on a thing. Yeah, and, that, and that's the thing about it. And, and you said something interesting, like coming up, like you were you were into books and stuff. I still accept him. Well, it's because he's he's jealous because I never accepted him, you know. And it's, <laughs> like, it's okay, you know, whatever. But um, when you were coming up, y- your shop was you said like thirty miles away and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. And when you did go to the shop, what would you pick up? Like what what type of books did you like? You came up during the the image time, didn't you? Yeah, I was. Uh, when image happened ninety one. I was ten years old. Oh wow! Can Whoa. you imagine? Can you imagine what that's like? I mean, it's like being ten years old when Marvel started. Like you got, you know, the first Fantastic Four when you're ten years old and you're a fan for life. I already knew like comics. You know, um, I'm a big Hulk fan. That's my that's nice. my dude. That's my jam. Mm. Uh, just because of the monster aspect, I'm a big Robert Louis Stevenson fan. Oh and, cool. Uh, the Hulk Dr. is an Jack analog Mr. of uh, Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde. So. Mm. And plus the Ferrigno thing, and you know, I picked up on it. But what once Image happened, like I was, I was already a voracious reader. So I would say that was more advanced, like highbrow. But as far as like prose, you know, I was reading, you know, heavier stuff. And so the Image, everybody knows what the cover of Young Blood One looks like and what it's about. What's 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 the second book like? I couldn't I tell, struggle I couldn't tell you. I was like I'm trying to remember the cover to the second book. They had Bad Rock on it. I don't remember. But yeah, you're right. Know. Like nobody remembers. The stories were let's just say less than optimal mm. for what I was, you know, wanting because I came off of like Extinction Agenda, oh, you yeah. know, like, you know, stuff like that. I'm like this stuff looks cool, but there's no substance, you know. It's it's an empty calorie. Yeah. And then my but- buddy was like, "Have you ever heard of Vertigo?" And I was like, well, what is that? He's like, well, this is a uh, this is Swamp Thing. And I was like, oh, that stupid ass movie with Heather Locklear. He was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> yes, but no. He's like, this is guy named Alan Moore. I'm like, okay, well, I'll give it a shot, dude. I couldn't stop it. He was like, he's like, uh, well, here's Sandman. It was like, oh man, I didn't know any of this existed. It was like, it's like bro. hearing yeah. a different. It's like. It's like hearing Jimi Hendrix for the first time, and when you were just listening to like bluegrass music, you're just like, mm-hmm. like it's 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 it challenged what I thought comic books could be. Yeah, and then we crep in with we creep in with like 2000 AD, mm-hmm. and like uh, Strontium Dog, 
of Judge Dredd. I love all that stuff. Like the, uh, and then I started studying artists. Like I tried to be an artist. I'm just slow. Uh, but I do know how, like, I, I do know what art looks like. Like I was telling Kayla, Adrian, I was like, mm. I have a good eye for art, but not the wallet for it. <laughs> so like, I would love to hire all these people. And I'm like, I know what it looks like. I know what, how to look at a portfolio. Not, not at the level like a real artist does, but like I, I can do pinups and stuff. I thought you you drew your book. I so no, just, yeah, good grief, I thought so no. too. Good grief, no. Um, I wish. Like I, I did some of the character designs. I saw. I think I sold the concept piece for seventy five bucks on the first campaign. Oh, nice. So, you know, my art has been sold, but it's uh, it's more uh, of the storytelling vein. I want to I want to have a comment. I don't know how you feel about this, Hojo, but I see it. Oh, I see it. You want to hear an impression? I could do an EVS impression. I, I want to hear your impression because I do. I don't. Apparently, I don't do a very good one. Go ahead. Well, I'm I'm Ethan Vance Carver, comic book professional. <laughs> um, I have uh, thirty years. No, shut up. He's like, fuck you, fuck you. He's got. And then he has to go all south fully on you. <laughs> but uh, but when yeah. he does this, where he's like, no, 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 no I, 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 I love pie, pie. Is awesome. <laughs> but but I, I can't do his rant. Sometimes I, it, it takes me a while to get the cadence of his voice. Yeah, I, I yeah, scared the living shit out of him. Like the, the first but time Shane, that I, the first Shane time I ever met him, like, it's gay. <laughs> the first time I met was Ben Skyver. I scared the living shit out of him. Oh. Um. When uh, I went to Comic Con, and this one he was still doing uh, Hall of Heroes. He was still he was mm -hmm. barely getting into Cyber Frog, uh, right. and uh, Kanua Kanuga was there as well. They had a little table at, at Comic Con at SDCC, and uh, I remember buying Cyber Frog one. And in the back of Cyber Frog, there was a thank you letter, like a thank you page, and one of the mm -hmm. thank yous was to Satan. He said, "Thank you, Satan, for always being there." Right. So I went up to him. I'm like, "Hey, man, I saw your thank you page, and I totally agree with you." Hail Satan, it went like that, and he was like, "Oh what? my God, yeah!" <laughs> like I know he was joking because I was joking yeah. too, but he was like, "Oh my God!" Like he scared the living shit. Like, he turned, he turned paler. So, oh was, man! Oh, is that That's possible? Damn. It is possible. So, transparent. <laughs> transparent. Translucent. Anything but sir. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Hey, let's head to the chat before we, we move yes, on. Yes, we got all into it because this is a good yeah, conversation. Yeah. That's why, but let's go to the chat. Let's see who's in Biggs. there. We got quite a few people. Mo Biggs, hail the chat. Thank you, Mo Biggs, for joining us. Edwin, the A's on the three coming soon. Acevedo, hail peeps. Good to see you, sir. We've got El Grincho. Hey, finally. Hey, 656. Craig, yo, 656. Excel's here. Good to see you, Mo. Justice for Mo. I'm not sure what's going on there, but we'll find out in a second. And Freddie Ness, I can't believe it's not Domingasso. It's like, I can't mm. believe it's not butter. <laughs> Raiden Radio, fucking Hojo. Reagan Radio, thank you so much for joining us, sir. Mega Arts, Late and Ray. Hi. Mm. Oh, shit. <laughs> mm. Nice. <I> that one. <laughs> no, I'm just going to need to talk about the cyber turd. You know, that's interesting because Krieger used to be like hardcore EVS lover, and now he's like completely turned. What was he? I don't, I don't I, remember. I, I mean, he bought, his, he bought the box. He bought all that yeah. stuff. And I mean, we all we all bought the the. I I want to say that we had a little bit of 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 you know of input in that, like we uh you know kind of pushed yeah. him in that direction to get away yeah. from him. So yeah, we saved one. That's cool. Mm. We, saved we saved one. one. <laughs> I mean, everybody's free to buy whatever they want, guys. Come yeah, on. man. Yeah. There's your disclaimer. Go ahead. Your disclaimer. <laughs> no, but we were we were coming back to that. So you were saying, um, so you got into Sandman. Which is my jam, and then from there we're and you got into 2000 AD, fucking mm -hmm. awesome, Alan Moore, yeah. all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, oh, oh, the uh, the Animal Man run with mm -hmm. from uh, Grant Morrison. That's first time I'd heard of Grant Morrison, and probably the the majority of uh, the Western world. Yeah, Grant Morrison and me, we uh we don't like each other either. So yeah, That's I don't all. like. Here, here's a hot take, and uh, <laughs> and we'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and wrap EVS into this one. Even Ethan's art couldn't save. The new X Men, that shit sucked, dude. I'm sorry. There was uh, there was like slight little like little snippets that were cool, but uh, for the just... most part, like that sec. See, I'm a big Hank McCoy fan. Like my 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 super mm. team was the Defenders. Oh, nice. Like, that's cool. like those. If you read the Mythicals, you'll see, you'll you'll see some some homages to that because they hate each other. I'm gonna get that book. Don't worry. It's, yeah. it's on. This <laughs> it's it's all right, man. But uh. 
they uh the defenders were like the non team, right? You know? Mm-hmm. So that like that was my thing. Um I forgot where I was going. Why did I even mention the defenders? Because of the because of uh Morrison. Because of Oh Morrison. Morrison, yeah. Yeah. And then like you just can't write a team. He just he's not good with a team. Like even Morrison's Batman run, like uh, I didn't like it either. And but so mm-hmm. like they said, to each their own. The all oh, beast. That's what it was. What he did yeah. to Hank McCoy, like make him look like that. I, I can kind of you know you got to change it up every now. And then. Nothing. I've even seen the Wonder Woman in nineteen you know in the seventies when they made her a feminist. Uh, Denny O'Neill. That's yeah. the one he wishes he could have back. Yeah, I that's, remember that. That's the tattoo you wish you never got. Like you're always that. attached to that. I'm like, ooh. So, um, like, I'm not a fan. So, so what? There are lots of other writers I'm fans of, you know, like of artists as well. You know, Morrison is is hit or miss, man. Like honestly, like like some of the stuff that he did independently, like We Three. I love We Three. That, yeah. That shit, like, yeah, I forgot about that, man. Badass, you know. Yeah, did but, he do the Invisibles? Was that him too? Yeah, he yeah, was, like he, the Invisibles. He did the Invisibles, the, and then no, no, he did. Black. Um, he did. Um, oh damn, he did Doom Patrol. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he did yeah. The Invisibles, and then Gerard Way decided to just bite all the shit that he did on on uh, the Invisibles, and then write Umbrella Academy. That's the way that works. Uh yeah. Is that your your Gerard Way? Uh, yeah, I'm jab, like jab of the night, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> mm. Mm. See, I never watched Umbrella Academy or any of that stuff. Or if the you, boys. If you, if you read the Invisibles and you watched Umbrella, yeah. you watched okay, okay, good, okay. I, I, I just watched the first season. I, I liked it, but the second, yeah. I couldn't get into it. Yeah, I don't do like I'm not big on deconstruction because it's. Just, I just think it's become a lazy, like it's a, tr- it's become a trope in itself, mm-hmm. you know. So, like, uh, I mean, we don't have paragons anymore uh, because they've they've destroyed them all. So, like I said, to the way, like, the mainstream people constantly bitch about mainstream. Com- I saw today that there's a female server, sur- Silver Surfer. So what? I wasn't going to see that shit anyway. Um, like Marvel, they are they they have the mainstream comic industry is your ex girlfriend that she don't want you no more, man. But you have those pictures, you have those good times. Memories never go away. Um, cherish what you had. Now she's got somebody new, and you can just laugh when she f- messes up because she will. Just laugh, and then go get something new. Go make something new. Make something. I'm not gonna say better. Something to challenge it because that's to be like, well, we're gonna take over, Marvel. We gonna we gonna do. Th-. No, you're not. Just stop it. Just do <laughs> your not. thing. Just do your thing, man. And try to convince people to come along. Tell a good story. People always come back. Because, I mean, writers and artists always go back and forth. Like, well, they can't. So it's a symbiotic relationship. It's not a comic book without either. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, and then, and like, here's my marketing pitch. And there's, like, my 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 American South upbringing. Something my dad would say. He's like, the, with the comic book, there, here's a boy. How come? The art sells a book, but the story will set the hook. Which means... You have to have something in between here to get number two exactly. in people's memories. Mm-hmm. Like I've outsold, I, not with backers, but I'm about 20 some backers away, but I have outsold issue one with issue two of a floppy by over a thousand dollars, which doesn't See. seem like a lot, but in my terms, that's a whole hell of a lot. For, that's for some grabbing people's a book entire that's not distributed fun. nationally, that is a, that's an accomplishment, you know? It's, it's pretty insane. Like, People laugh at it, and I see people they even shit on it. Like I retweeted something today where this guy was like, "This is pathetic." Did your parents make? Uh, were your parents your only backers? I'm like, "Yeah, I have 344 parents." <laughs> Ass clown. <And> guess what? <laughs> you guess what? I saw like, and this was back in November. Yeah. Somebody retweeted. I was like, "Oh, let me." Ch-. Well, his account has been suspended. Hmm, I wonder why. Not that I reported him because he probably went and bitched at the wrong at a bigger dog than me. Yeah, and their fans were like, "Wow, oh, this guy gotta go. This guy gotta go." I got five fans, but guess what? They're starting to be loyal. Like they will, they will, they buy my books. This guy was like, "You keep making them, you got a customer for life because you're not late and you got good shit." Mm-hmm. That's all people want in this space anymore. Now, price point, I'm doing what I can. 
I'm at the mercy of economics and morons who don't know what economics are and they write economic policies. How does that work? Some of these people can't do basic math and they're running the country. Oh yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like I've watched, I've been watching, uh, I watched Cat Williams on like a, uh, some interview show that was like with Shannon Sharp, like two months mm-hmm. ago. Mm-hmm. That guy is, I already knew he was smart, but that guy is a genuine human being. And like, and a comedian is one of the most honest, they tell lies and stories, but they're one of the most honest, they're some of the most honest people you'll ever meet because they know people and they go town to town and they know what people are like. And they're, they're, they're actually, and I'm not going to say like Steve Harvey, he's not an authentic person, but like you're, you're, you're working comedian. They're some of the most authentic people in the world mm-hmm. because they could talk to people. Yeah. And it's a hard thing to do to get up and talk to people. Like you said, that's a hard thing to do. Go up and talk to people and just tell a story, make it seem like you're just talking. But they've crafted that stuff. So like, it's an art form. But like, oh, I could be a stand-up comedian. No, you can't or else you would be. Yeah. I can't. Especially when I start drinking, I'll start stuttering. And people are like, this guy's taking way too much LSD. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, but Oh, man. Very, very cool, sir. No, no, that's that's exactly it, man. If you're honest and you're genuine and you got good product, then there's no stopping you. And that's that's something that we are trying to push as well. And I appreciate the fact that you're doing it also, man. You, you can tell you have the passion for it. You love what you do. That's, I do. that's you genuine. have to. <laughs> what what I'm now? Getting, I'm getting called out. Yeah. Who's calling you out? <laughs> Lee, you need to hear what the th- I, I do, dude. I do. Is is he lonely? Like, is is he lonely? Like, all yeah. he does now is like be glued to his computer all the time, and he's like, yeah. What is he I doing? Mean, I mean, he's becoming a YouTuber, so yeah. Yeah. Oh, is that, is that what it is? I'm sorry. Like half a million views off of something. I saw Remember yeah, when he used yeah. to do I comics? Oh, Remember he used to do yeah. comics. Like something Ryan? about a tape. Something about a tape. Yeah. Tape yeah. Remember one? that? Too? Mm, yeah. I heard. Oh, man. Dude, I'm doing paperwork right now. I'm, bro, I'm doing Anyways. paperwork right now. Yeah, and I'm doing a stream and having a good time talking to people who love comics, not you. Yep. <laughs> Salud. Salud. Oh, yeah, here you go. Some quick. <laughs> next week. Are you drinking chocolate milk? That's right. Drink your chocolate milk. Um. <sighs> so all of this, all of this passion, all of this work brought you to do the mythicals. You've been working on that. How long have you been working on that for? Uh, well, I started the story uh, 2005. We were, and it's not what it is, not, nothing close, like maybe a few elements, Nancy especially. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we uh, this guy supposedly had an in with cross-gen comics, which I like. I liked a lot of their stuff. I was like, oh, cool. And it turns out I've actually been on streams with some people who work there. That in itself is crazy. That's cool. Uh, but we got back and they were out of business, man. We were on a deployment like every day when we were on, weren't on patrol and weren't doing stuff. People thought we were in there having gay sex, but we were making a comic. Um, so we got back, they're out of business. And he's like, Oh, we can always submit the image. I'm like, ha see you later. I got <laughs> stuff to do. I don't have time to be dealing with pipe dreams. I'm 20. I was like, I'm 25 years old. I got, I have to start living my life. Uh, here I am 42 and I'm, living my life like i wanted to then i guess but yeah. uh so you know things happen for a reason you know fate is a funny thing um if you believe in it so one day i'm looking at my terrible sports team on twitter i'm like oh i look at said tre- trending is like ethan van scover is like i know that guy because when i came back from afghanistan or iraq i can't remember uh, Greenland Rebirth had just come out. Mm-hmm. They had been out like six months earlier. We're still, they still had spinner racks back then. And this was in Fort Campbell in Kentucky. And I was like, oh, how Jordan's back. Oh, this art's gorgeous. The story is phenomenal. I was like, oh man, Jeff Johns has really leveled up because I had seen like he did like a Justice Society reboot, the JSA. Yeah. Love that. Um, I didn't think I would like that. Um, so I was like, oh, that guy's, I mean, this guy's good. I got to read the next one. And so that name, I mean, Ethan Van Skyver, that, that name, you know, will stick in your mind for better or worse. Um, <laughs> so 
when I saw that trend, and I was like, click on it. I was like, oh, it was like comic skate. I was like, oh, what's that? Oh, oh. And I'm seeing, I was like, hate, 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 hate. And was like, I go to Wikipedia, which is my litmus test for propaganda and uh, bullshit. Mm-hmm. So if Wikipedia says it, it must be not true. So it's like all these, it's like a Christian national hate group. I'm like, that they hate diversity in comics. And then I start running to all these people that are like, you know, black and Latino and liberal and stuff. I'm like, yeah, these people are full of shit. These, they're just tired of what's the critical drinker called the message. They're, they're tired of all that. Like they're tired of Superman fighting climate change versus general Zod. Like stop doing that. Stop trying to score points with uh, a certain demographic that you think is a majority, which is an underwhelming minority. Mm Mm-hmm. So you're letting the, you're not telling stories, you're telling lectures. So, so you missed more the the escapism aspect. Yeah. Of like when the Marvel said the world, it's the world outside your window. I don't want that shit no more. I want to, I want to shut my door and go and be like, oh, I want to go to another dimension. I want to <laughs> read like a, an anthology, a horror anthology. I want to read anything but the news. Anything you're just putting the news, you're just you're just you're just doing activist shit with with tights. Is all you're doing. I'm tired of it. So, um, I was sitting there. It was like I just looked up, and I was like, "No, we're not on my watch." If I don't like what I'm seeing, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm not gonna complain about it. I'm gonna try to offer an alternative. So for about, I studied all the crowdfunding stuff, all this for a long time, for probably about six months before mm-hmm. I even got my script ready because it was mostly written anyway. I'd been, I'd been kind of tinkering with it often. You can't, you can't put it away forever. A store that's bugging you, like me, I have, I have to complete things. Like I, even if it's a terrible TV show, I will watch it to the end because I have to know how it ends just so I can bitch about it and say, yeah, I wasted my life. But uh, I just wanted to tell my story. And then it just one day blossomed into this. I was going to do a 48 page graphic novel. And I was like, oh, no, this is too big for that. Mm-hmm. We're going to do 13 issues because that's a cool supernatural number marketing. Um. And then we're just going to do floppies because nobody else is not, not at a level that would be like worthy of a follow-up. Cause I had gotten a few floppies and let me tell you, um, I didn't buy a number two and yeah. guess what? They don't have a number two. So I made a cold calculated decision to, I sold some guitars, um, did what I could moved a few things around, sold some comics, not proud of it, but I did it. Uh, to come up with a little investment money to pay the artists and all that, because guess what? Artists like to get paid on time, yeah. not after a crowdfunding that may or may not net them the money that they seek. So <laughs> I paid my artists. And then I was like, I looked at my wife. I said, this is a proof of concept. If we do say five figures, which that ain't going to happen, it did, but we're going to go forward with number two because it's already written because once uh, issue one was like written. I couldn't stop writing it. I I wrote the whole thing. It's done. I mean, it's not all done. It's it's all plotted out. Six issues are written, completely. Nice. Twenty six pages, done. I can. But now all I got to do now is look at this outline. It's basically all these bullet points, and I just have to fill in the blanks, you know, so to speak. Mm-hmm. I know how it ends. It's done. In my mind, it's done. It's wrapped. I'm doing other things. I have other projects now. It's 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 game on now. Like I got. I could just write for fun and eventually I'll get to it. And so, you know, here I am. I got sci-fi ideas. Like I'm doing a short story or a, in a horror anthology for broken compass. You guys know those guys. They yeah. do a yeah. mm-hmm. unconditional shove. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm in part two. So awesome. they asked me to do a spot on that. And he was like, cause the mythical is like, uh, it's, I would say PG 13, you know, but I asked him, I said, what are the, what are the guardrails? You know, what's, what's my, what's my speed limit on this? You know, he was like, oh, bro, there are no speed limits. <laughs> like, it's like the Whoa. end of, it's like there are no roads. You know, it's like the car is just going up. He's like, do your thing. I went and I told him the, I pitched him the idea. He was like, oh, f- 
hell yes. And nice. I'm pretty proud of that one because I'm a big Twilight Zone fan. Nice. And Unconditional Shove, it's almost like like Creep Show and Twilight Zone like combined. So mm-hmm. awesome. it was right up my alley. I was like, I can, I, I, I got this. And it's a great story. It's kind of like the, it's kind of like a horror version of the Notebook. Oh wow, that's pretty. Yeah. Cool. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It just popped in my head, and I told my wife about. It. She's like, "You're sick." I was like, "That's why it's, good. That's why it's gonna be good." And and as far as your your inspirations for the book, um, the stuff that you were picking up, like back in the '90s, you know, stuff that you would pick up, uh, you know, from Vertigo and stuff like that. Did that all contribute to this? Like, what kind of stuff inspired you to to do this type of story to do horror? Yeah, that that creepiness, like, uh, see, like it can really be what you, if you think some people think this is a superhero book, like, like, uh, what Malin does graveyard shift. It ain't that like, it could be like, I guess compared to like BPRD. I've never read that, but, uh, I used to read, it was actually an image title. It was like called the, uh, the adventures of Max Faraday divine, right? That's what that was. That was my favorite book from the image ever did. Oh, really? That's, uh, that's in this a little bit. Um, the way I pitch this, this is Buffy the Vampire Slayer meets uh, Wildcats with a little X Files conspiracy in it, because there's always something that under the surface. Like mm-hmm. once the readers get to it after three or four issues, they're like, what the f-? "I thought this was like a little cool monster story, but something else is going on." Mm. Like it's where they say it's all connected. <laughs> Boy, howdy, this is all connected. Every every because I got limited real estate, so every page has a plan. And every uh, panel has a purpose, so they all go together. It all fits together like a big puzzle at the end. See, that's because I kind of wrote it. I kind of wrote it backwards. Once I figured out the ending, I was like, "Uh," because I was kind of stuck on the beginning on how to open the book. I was like, "Well, everybody always comes up with a cool beginning, like a cool opening line, like you know, uh, Mm -hmm. it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, you know, something like that." Like I didn't have anything, and then just one night I had a nightmare, and I was like. Oh, I'll just open it with a nightmare. That's See, perfect. It's a horror book. Yeah, the, the best horror books are those that are disturbing. Like you have to after you're done either reading or watching a horror movie and you're left with this sick feeling. Mm. That's I think though that's the best horror. Like it's it's uneasiness. It's disturbing. It's like you're yes. checking doors and stuff. Now, that's the type of horror that I love. I don't I, I appreciate like slasher horror and all that other stuff. But the type of horror that stays with you after you're done watching it, like The Exorcist, for example, that's like the, the cold stuff sweat that... on the back of your neck. Yeah. Like I can't, I can't. Like the and with a horror book, like with a floppy too, page turns are crucial. Like mm-hmm. way more. I, I wouldn't say way more, but I would say more so than like you know, like a traditional like a superhero book or something like that. Yeah, because you turns only need a page turn for like so... a, a big action punch or something. Mm-hmm. I have to do a page turn to get somebody to go. Oh, what the? Yeah. Yeah. Oh no! Look at the space. No, I, you know, I can't. Uh, a lot of work goes into it. But, well, if it were easy, everybody would do it. Well, actually, everybody is doing it. But if it were easy, everybody would succeed. I guess there you go. Bad. Yeah. I like this other way. It's complete. complete. That was That's a selling point on the first one too. Selling point, yeah. That's another issue right there all in itself because people are complaining about that. Like People have been waiting for books for years and nothing gets uh, delivered, but if the book is complete, then by all it means... Is, uh, it, is, it assuages a lot of apprehension, mm-hmm. I'll tell you that. Because it's, it's safe. It's, you know, unless somebody's lying to you, but uh, uh, I don't have... I'm very selective on what I do back, when I do back, because mm-hmm. like I told her once we had a proof of concept, I was like, let's do issue two because we're going to come back in like five months and people be like, oh, this cat's serious. Mm-hmm. It ain't, it ain't, there's no way I can do it every month because I can't fly down to Brazil and chain these people to their desks. <laughs> it costs a lot of money. And plus, my, my anchor, he owns a funeral home. He might kill me and stash my body somewhere. <laughs> so, and that's a good selling point on the book, too. Like, my anchor owns a funeral home. And not not just like it's not a funeral home. He's like got like a chain. I didn't know they had chains. Oh wow! Like, like, like a franchise. Like, yeah, he has a franchise. <laughs> franchise of, uh, yeah, it's crazy. Wow. I'm like man, I guess I got a lot of murders in Rio. But uh, <laughs> I so. I remember uh, in in during the height of the cartel war. Yeah, over here, uh, funeral homes, man. A lot of a lot of business there, right? Oh, I bet. I oh bet. yeah. 
but but they were they were at a certain point untouched by by the cartel mm -hmm. but then they were like hey there's a lot of business with you guys yeah, so. yeah a little bit of piece of that <laughs> yeah again, we gotta we like, gotta get, get a, a, get a, a, a nice funeral home right? would be a shame if you ended up in one guys. of these coffins <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep you in business if you keep us in business <laughs> yeah i know yeah I just, oh man that's crazy man but that's it cannot be a funeral home because you, you're killing like everybody yeah ass. You know what? We're gonna stop killing people. Let's see how you do then. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Home's what be now? There. What now? Oh, what oh yeah, oh yeah. Guess yeah. what? We're gonna stop doing drugs. Put you on drugs. Yeah. Oh man. This, is, this, guy, this has to be my favorite image of your campaign. That is cool. That says so much without saying yeah. anything. That just yeah. piques interest yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. That's my layout. That's Oliver. Cool. That's a good name. Uh, I found him. He was doing something for Joe Sontag, and I was like. Hey man, you want to do a cover? I said, here's my concept. He's like, oh, that's that. Would, I would be honored. I'm like, I wouldn't that's say cool. that, but uh, oh shit, thank you. Because he was like, yeah, I know who you are. It's crazy when people actually know who I are. If like it, I am like I ping somebody. I'm like, man, what's up? I'm like, uh, not much. I'm like your book looks great. I'm like, how do you know who I am? But it's because I can't stop tweeting about it. You have to. Nice, so oh, Krager. He's got the Krager bump. That's Bam. cool. Bam! I like the cut of your jib, Hojo. Just snag the copy of cover A and catch up. Nice. Hey, I, like your, I like your spunk. I, yeah. got spunk. I like your spunk. You got chutzpah. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> my wife, oh, awesome. either, man. I am not going to say it. Yeah. <laughs> my, my wife likes my spunk, too. Uh, <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> you already did, bro. Relax. Yeah. It's the way. Don't you have paperwork to go do? Get out of here. Go. No, go away. Go sign papers. Aquí huele a vaca maloliente. Okay, that's right. That's way too Mexican for me right there. I'm not maloliente? Like smelly. Oh. Pues cierra la boca, güey. Anyway. Um, oh. oh. Damn. Oh. <laughs> oh. Got him. <laughs> That was a good comeback, Ray, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. I'm full of them. You know, I'm here all uh, night. Try the veal. Thank you. Please tip your waiters. Oh, I can look down there. It says Era is not typing. Yes. <laughs> she got yeah, yeah. So, okay. I mean, so yeah, it's, a, it's a decent cover. I like the colors, too. Like, I had too yeah, much of a hand in there. I think the guy who did the colors. Introduce the story to us. Give me, give me your elevator pitch for the mythicals. Okay. It's. Um, the elevator pitch would be the Buffy the Vampire Slayer meets Wildcats, but we'll go deeper. All right. So, The Mythicals is a horror action mystery that puts Nancy Moon with Level M, which is a covert task force comprised of creatures of myth and legend that saved the world from supernatural threats. So, I never read it, but Michael Bancroft said it reminds him of like the Dresden Chronicles and stuff nice. like that. Yeah. So, um, cool. We'll, we'll go with that. And we have a wise talking cat now. With the first book, it's like, see, the first two issues are like a two part pilot. The first one, oh, yeah, dude, I got that. Actually, I got that right here. It's like a metal print now. Yeah, I don't, I don't mail her, dude. God damn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He has, he has a trading card set, like, actually. like Yeah, this is it. This is from very it. nice. Yeah. It's, it's hot, man. Yeah. But, uh, so the first one is her finding out that this whole world, you know, is is real and she finds her power set. She joins the team. Uh, issue two, first day at work. So it's like like in Men in Black, you know, mm -hmm. that first opening part is him finding out. It's like, what the hell? That dude's eyes blinked. <laughs> and he gets recruited. He's like, let me tell you something slick. It's getting crazy. And he gets off the elevator, and he sees like aliens pouring coffee, and mo aliens walking around. He's like, "What in the actual? Yeah." So that's issue two. Like she comes to work for the first time, and we pick back up with the villain because, like, in the first one, like they don't even, like. That's the cool part about it. Like the villain and them, they're on two totally different continents. But he's looking for something, and they don't know it yet. But they're going to be looking for the same something. Z which are like these artifacts that could, you know, destroy the world, you know, or save it, <laughs> you know. So we get to do, like, I'm a big Indiana Jones fan. I love history. Obviously, that's going to be in this book, too. So we get, 
once we get going and get, you know, her case, these cases, and we find out what we're trying to do, once they figure it out, it's all coming to a head and we get to world hop, or not world hop, but hop throughout the world on these crazy adventures, each issue to find a different piece. You guys remember this, uh, it's called the Pirates of Dark Water. Yeah. yeah. It was a cartoon. Like they were after these pieces. Never got a resolution of that. It pissed me off to no end. Like it just ended on a cliffhanger. Like they, you don't, did he get all the pieces and make the mystical Triforce thing that he was after or whatever. So, but each ish, each episode was like a different quest to get a piece, to yeah. go to a different land to find something, an artifact. So I did that with this kind of like Warehouse Thirteen too. I love that show. Man, that, was that was a cool show, show too. That man. was a great show. That was unique, very much so. And, uh, and like, and people have been saying that this is like a unique book. It's 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 kind of in between. This would have been either an image or a Vertigo book. I would have I would have wanted to be. It would have been great. Nice. So, but like Nancy Moon, that's just like a cool name. Like I've spent a lot of time on all of this. Like I, in my trading cards, uh, they're unique too. They got like a little case file on the back that'll tell you about them. Mm-hmm. I don't do Marvel Series Two cards. Like I said, that's cool. It's retro, but that ain't my style, man. Like I, I, I don't move differently. I swim alternately. So, so tell us, tell us about this character right here because this is the the world. Oh. Right? This yeah, yeah, yeah. We get to introduce him in this so. one because, like, the the team gets fully rounded out, you know, in this one. So everybody's on, you know, everybody's together. But you didn't get to meet the sexy lady, the blue lady with the wings, and you didn't get to meet Carl here. So Carl used to run Level M. Right now, it's run by a, a smart ass soldier that who thinks his shit doesn't stink, and he's into the extreme '90s stuff and. There's even a line in here when he's got all these pouches and he's like, which one's it in? He was like, the kids would make fun of me about my pouches right now. <laughs> so, like I, I said, a little bit of the comedy. And, you know, um, and I, I try not to put any social commentary in it. They're, like, if I do, if anything is me, it's the cat. Like, uh, because he doesn't, all he wants to do is be left alone and read. He doesn't care. I mean, he cares about these people, but he, they're pets to him. They're a burden. Like, that's what they say when you have a cat the cat owns you yeah um so he has to look after all of these people but carl used to run the show and so you can imagine like when a literal alpha male walks in on somebody who thinks he's an alpha male and he lucas is the first time he has to look up literally to talk to somebody and he's just like well it's gonna be fun when they get in a car together and start talking about heavy metal <laughs> And it's the characters that really make, like, they say a team book is hard. I was from the military. That's really all I knew. Yeah. Like, I read a lot of team books t- as well. Like, you you have to have a checklist when you're doing a team, and you have to give everybody something to do, or unless they're just standing there just going, you just can't do, I, I hate that shit. Everybody has a functional role on this team, or they wouldn't be here. So you're talking so, about, about team books. Um, is that something that you read? Like growing up, a lot of like I don't know. Are you into Marvel? Aren't you DC? Because I know you know Marvel has the X Men, the Avengers. Yeah, yeah. I was young. I was a uh, I was an I was a Marvel guy. Like the only DC I read or had was like Green Lantern and Flash, and that was those were hand me downs. Mm. I, I didn't really read any Batman or anything like that until like the '89 movie came out. Oh wow! And so, uh, which I was only like eight years old. Yeah, but. Uh, I didn't really get into DC until <laughs> funny enough, like when they did that zero hour thing that everybody hated. Oh, Cause I was, cause that was a good jumping on point for me. You know, I'm like, yeah. Oh, I, I know who Hawkman is. And then like, I look at this Hawk world and this Hawk, it was like, it's completely different and everybody hates it. Now I know why they hate it. Cause I've gone back and read the old Hawkman. I, I do like Hawkman. He was a, it was a, that was an interesting character. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I love the X-Men. I like, see, like I'm a B-sides guy. Like I don't listen to the popular song. I'll listen to the B-side mm-hmm. song that's like 13 minutes long with the good riffs that only the musicians like, you know. So I would read Excalibur. I like that fantasy thing, that element, the Siege Perilous. That was that was a great idea. Oh, hell yeah, man! The Siege Perilous. Now you're talking. Um, about it. Yeah, Alpha Flight for better or worse. Uh, <laughs> I thought. Uh, 
God, what was his name? I think his name was Wild Heart. He ended up being like Wild Child or something like mm. that. That he had a cool backstory where he was like brainwashed. They kind of made him like a poor man's Wolverine. Um, but X Factor, that mm. like I love like Walter Simonson and like Louise Simonson that yeah. run. Even though like they say Apocalypse is a cool villain, even though after that first arc, he literally had nothing to do again ever. Like that, even compared to that. But like Archangel, that whole thing, like the Warren Worthington, the arc that he did, no pun intended, he's right up there. That was uh, that was crazy. Like that was, and, and like a woman did that and didn't bat an eye, and she didn't say, "Oh, I'm a woman, I'm doing this." No, she just fucking write her, and she just wrote her shit with her husband. You know how cool that's got to be, and probably how irritated at the same time. You know, like honey, like you. You're following me to work? Yeah, we live here. <laughs> um, so, so, you know, the B sides like Excalibur. Like, I didn't, I, I loved West Coast Adventures. Um, oh, West Coast with Flatman and who else? Yeah. The, no, wait, that was the Great Lakes Adventures. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, that was like Wonder Man and uh, mm. like when they're for Tight a while. Run, and, yeah, yeah. Machine. Hawkeye and we have War Machine. He was actually Iron Man. When he started that team, mm-hmm. he had like the uh, silver centurion armor, I think. That's right. That's right. So, but like, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm different, man. I don't, I'm not the uh, conformist. I don't, I'm not a non conformist just for the sake of being a non conformist. But it's like, like, I'm not even big into Star Wars. I always thought Star Wars was kind of a lame ripoff of Dune and uh, John Carter of Mars, but which it is. But, I'm a Star Trek guy. Like, I'm not saying I'm too smart, but that's you got to be a certain. You have to think a certain way to enjoy Star Trek and appreciate it. I so. I appreciated Star Trek. I was more like once again the escapism, the fantasy aspect of it of Star Wars. I was more into that. But Star Trek had its good points, you know. Some yeah. of the movies were really good. Wrath of Khan was like intense that's, and insane. That's, dude. Man, that's like, like a. It's. It's an episode of the original series, just like on steroids. Yeah, like, and people died. <laughs> and it, it was everything was good about it, man. Everything, which, it's perfect. Which one? Which was the episode that like got a lot of praise? The, the oh, the uh, uh, edge, the city on the edge of tomorrow. That was yeah, the, that like, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. That mm. one was a good, good episode. Yeah, too. I remember that one. That was and the one. Uh, I'm sorry. Good. The one that's got Frank Gorshin in it, where it's like yeah, half his face is black, yes. the other half is white, that handled racism great. Um, mm-hmm. Star Trek was always on the cutting edge of stuff like that. Like, yeah, Space it was the Nine, first, that uh, was good. That was good writing. The first interracial kiss happened on Star Trek, man. It was, right. uh, you know, Captain Kirk yeah. and Uhura. And that's right. Captain Kirk right. and the and interspecies the kiss, too, I think. So, <laughs> yeah, the green I mean, lady, yeah, Captain Kirk. Lady. He checked a lot of boxes. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, I mean, Star Trek had its had its validity, like for sure, for sure. Like, like I said, you know, Star Wars was my jam. I was more into Star Wars than anything else, even to yeah. this day. But um, and I heard, I heard that they're rebooting Star Wars or Star Trek now, but they're trying to emphasize more on Captain Pike. Yeah, that's Captain what I heard. Kurt. Pike, yeah, yeah. And hate, I've seen what they've they done hate, with uh, some of the episodes and. It seems interesting. I'm kind of interested. So, yeah, I might give it a shot because they hate William Shatner. <laughs> Can't believe they did a thing of the uh, captains or whatever not too long ago, and they put all the Star Trek captains and left Captain Kirk off of it. He oh, was man. like, yeah, he, he's like, he's like, no big deal. It's not like you know, I was the first and the original, so no big deal. Moving on. He's got a lot of money. He doesn't care. Nah, I, I'm I sure he cares, but you know, what are you gonna do? Like you, you get canceled. Uh, you just try you get canceled. Do that again. Really? No, I mean, like if you get canceled, just oh, yeah. pick up the pieces and move on. I guess. I, I heard I that because um, this the SpaceX thing is not very far from here. It's in Sierra Blanca. It's oh, okay. like maybe like an hour away from us, mm-hmm. more or less. And uh, that's where they shot him up with everybody else that Elon Musk decided to to take that time. And when he was leaving, I remember he was very very excited to go into space. He had never been in a space. But they said that when he came back, he was so like very um what's the word? Like uh he was he wasn't shaken. talking to anyone. He was shaken by what he saw. And uh 
he was very depressed and nobody could get it out of him as to what what happened up there what did he see that made him like change his, his soul attitude about uh about humanity and um i think it like bits and pieces came out that he's just ashamed that he he's ashamed that he's a human he's, sh- he's ashamed for a race wow. all this other stuff so i don't know what exactly oh. type of um uh like sensation or epiphany he had up there but it, it changed him it changed him hmm. so that's interesting i never heard of that cut off the oxygen supply to his brain and gave him a half of a stroke <laughs> <laughs> it is possible he's up there in age let me see if i can find it but, but oh, you got almost 90. oh you got probed by someone yeah or? yeah something <laughs> like some people think it's funny that like you know 30 years ago they're like man that's crazy talk you mentioned aliens and last well, crazy talk you're just a conspiracy nut like no we're gonna put you on a list yeah i bet you did put people on a list and then now it's just like yeah we uh we got hearings and like yeah we that that craft's not from uh we fucked this, up guys this, it's it's real <laughs> the craft's not from this from this earth uh well we got a break for lunch and we'll see you guys oh, i don't know about like two years and then nobody talks about it again like oh well there there are uh, aliens down in florida walking around the mall first off who's going so to the check, mall check this out check this out william shatner experienced profound grief in space and this is his his quote. He said, although we are just dangling, Shatner adds, that we're dangling together, we're entangled with each other, he said, decrying conflicts between human beings. We have a war. The stupidity of it is also obvious. Like Shatner, astronauts often return from space more convinced of the incorrectness of humanity. Hmm. So, Probably he was up there. He saw the Earth. Like, that's what it is man like when you go up there and you get a bird's eye view or a god's eye view in yeah. this case of the earth you realize how insignificant all of these squabbles and I, I agree. Uh, disagreements and conquests and bullshit that's because what it is it's bullshit like you don't think like me so i hate you i want to destroy you and then like no wonder they don't want to land here. They're like, you. Did you hear that? You're not ready. <laughs> You're not ready. Because, it's just passed on by. <laughs> you know, because you know you can look at uh, when when was the first quote unquote documented case? You know, w- w- Roswell was what 1947, right? Yeah, more or less. Yeah. What what year did they drop the atomic bomb? That was a few years before that. Roswell 20... was 47. 44? Uh, 40, 45. 42. 42. 42. No, no, yeah, you're right. 45. 45. So, you think maybe that kind of set off an alarm bell somewhere, like an oven timer, and like, oh, let's go check on this shit. They're ready. Oh, oh boy, you are not ready. Yeah. But we're going to stay here and monitor this situation. I can fucking guarantee you that. Uh, you're not getting out of line because you cannot be trusted with anything above, like, uh, nuclear weapon for these things are probably is probably like the equivalent of a pea shooter. They don't want us to get the equivalent of a weapon. Um, but like I said, I don't really believe it. That's possible, man. That's that's a theory, but because I'm a writer, that's what that's how I would write it. Yeah, that's what I would do. <laughs> so they they come in with plasma TVs, no, and remote controls. Hey, but, yeah, but, all this, all these. <laughs> Advancements that just happen all of a sudden, like I don't know, Velcro or uh, plastic yeah. cellophane, uh, chemicals. And the bombs all of a sudden, there's no there's no leap after these things, though. Mm. Once you get the first microchip, all they're doing is making them smaller. They're not making them really do anything else. They're just making them do more. You know, like yeah. they, they can't. They're not. It's almost like you know with the Chinese when they steal IPs from us. They they can't create it. They can just kind of maybe improve on it a little mm-hmm. bit, but they can't make quantum leaps because they can't think forward enough to do that because they can't. To get like movie uh, Innocent Blood, have you ever seen that? It's a yeah. uh, horror movie. He was like, you know, I like the Chinese because like, they fucking steal. He's like, you think some Chinaman come up with the idea for a toaster oven? But here they are cranking them out. I'm Robert Loja. I remember that. I remember that movie. <laughs> yeah, it's a good movie. Yeah, that's a good movie. He so said, you ever try to put a calzone in it? Microwave comes out like a limp dick. 
<laughs> and I have a good, me- I have a great memory too. That's why. I'm- <laughs> oh man, it's been a while since I saw that yeah. movie. Man. Which movie is it? Uh, it's Innocent it Blood. Oh, dude, think of it. It's like Sopranos meets uh, it's a vampire Vampires. version of the Sopranos. Oh, yeah. really? The same guy who directed uh, American Werewolf in London. It's John Landis. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, it was Landis. Right. Not, it wasn't very popular at the time. It's kind of cult now, but. Oh yeah, it was a shit movie back then. Yeah. I, re- I remember the cover. Yeah, the the, the only saving yeah. thing was Robert Loggia, man. Anything yeah. that Robert Loggia's in, you know, yeah. Skeletor or whatever. I oh, know wait, that was Frank Langella. Sorry. Yeah. Um, Still a great movie. Yeah, man. And by the way, Oli, we don't take plasma TVs anymore. Anyway, microchips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there will be resistance. LCD? I'm yeah, right in that le- OLED, sir. OLED. 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 Yeah. OLED. Yeah, it's something else too. After the LED, and like I saw a commercial with it. Like you don't like an HD LED OLED. I'm like. That's not a real word. Yeah. <laughs> it's nuts, man. It's like all that stuff. So you're not taking plasmas anymore? Is that, is that a thing? No, we don't take plasma TVs. No, 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 no. What, what happens when you lie down a plasma TV? And then you pop it up and turn it on. I don't know what happens. It's all bubbly. It, ex- oh. it explodes from the inside. All the all the liquid, um, yeah. whatever, starts seeping out. Whenever you have a plasma TV, if you lie it down, you have to leave it standing for at least an hour or two. And then turn it off so it doesn't pop. Oh, is that the same yeah. thing with the roaches? Like, <laughs> in the, in the, I mean, I remember. <laughs> oh man, I've seen, I've seen things. Yeah, I've seen things, sir. Do you still disinfect TVs? Um, we look at the good? at the. It has to be five years, five years or more, sir. That's it. Yeah, or five years or less. Yes, yeah. so I'll take the we- TV. <laughs> Uh, like I, I repair electronics for a living. And I've seen some crazy things when I open up like chassis oh, and power supply. I've bet, seen li- I've seen lizards. I've seen all kinds. Of, I've seen. I took a picture of a bug. I still don't know what that thing is. I even <laughs> ran it through, like Google image search, came up with nothing, and it came from New Mexico. I, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't doubt it. I, wouldn't like, doubt I, bought, it. I bought a I bought a couple of Game Cubes at a flea market once, and I opened it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fucking a lot of. Cucarachas, oh, yeah. yeah. Because they seek that heat. That's what it is. Yeah. And they get in there and they touch. They arc themselves out. And they're done, yeah. man. It's that part. Do you remember the movie Prince of Darkness? You're a horror fan, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So that part in Prince of Darkness where he's watching TV and all the bugs start like going oh, into the worms yes. and stuff. I mean, it, it's the, the end of the world, mm. but still, that's that's a real thing, man. You turn on yeah. these TVs and everything just goes scattering everywhere. Mm. The pawn shop is full of them. It's just not. It's not fun, man. Sometimes. What's your What's your cleaning process? I, I want to hear this again. We get TVs like infested just, with, with with fucking roaches and shit. We hope to God that they're not infested, and we turn them on, yeah. and if stuff comes yeah. out, we just spray it. Yeah. That's all that can be done. Just you don't, right you don't open it. You don't like. When and someone it, brings me, uh, when someone brings me a microwave, I always like look at the microwave inside, see if it's dirty or not. Yeah. And they always ask for a lot of money, and I'm like, you know what? I'll give you five dollars more if you take this home and clean it, and then bring it back. <laughs> That's <laughs> hilarious. That's disgusting, dude. Because I'm no. not gonna, I'm not gonna clean that, dude. <laughs> like, no, I don't even I, clean my own one. My own. Yes, microwave. Dude, I'm gonna hey, clean hey, it hey. my wife does yes, that. Yes, do. <laughs> they do. <laughs> Man, yeah, microwaves are fucking. Oh man, disgusting shit. Yeah. Mm. Microwaves are bad. Uh TVs are bad. Um, what else? Toasters, all that stuff. Like we try not to take that anymore. You know what I did find that was really disturbing? This dude brought in his tools, like socket sets. And I opened them to make sure that all this all the pieces were in there and it was infested with freaking cockroaches. Oh, do you, do you wear gloves, dude, when you handle all this oh, shit? Oh, I don't know what's coming in, man. I just open oh, it up and there's a bunch man. of cockroaches. I'm like, ah, uh, no, I'm not taking this. Sorry. You can take that back. What's wrong with it? I'm like, what do you mean? What's wrong with it? Look, they're like coming on my on the table, dude. Like, get, get this out of here. They're crawling all over the place. But yeah, so you've seen some cool shit, though, I mean, come through, like, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, I some... mean, people still sell. Here's, the, I'm wondering, like, with the uh, the whole. I hate saying this word, the vintage market, because it sounds like a stupid ass <laughs> hipster word. Like, do people I mean, it, still it go in and sell like VHS tapes yeah. now. Like, people um, want this no, media. like DVDs and VHS tapes. You probably I don't see them anymore as often. People still ask yeah. for them, but I yeah. don't see them because I know people are crazy for them now. I ask for them. Yeah. VCRs are starting to trickle in again. But it's really difficult to test them because we don't take VHS tapes anymore. So I know. Like, how are we gonna test them? 
Um, DVD players are starting to trickle in again. Uh, what else? Um, like we're starting to take more games now. Like because mm. there, there was a time there that there was only like PS5 and Switch games that we we're taking, right. not even Xbox, Xbox One. But now people are starting to bring like Wii games and Super NES and Nintendo Game Boys, stuff like that. And we're starting to take them again. So there's a market for that. And it, you know, they are calling it vintage, which unfortunately, you know, it's like, no, it's not. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just like it retro. Normal. Retro is normal. Word. Yeah, retro. I like the word retro. Retro makes me feel younger. It's cooler. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. I took in a, a, like, it was huge. It was massive. A NECA, a NECA alien. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, wow. it was awesome. It was beautiful. And the guy didn't want that much for it. And I, and I bought it from him for the store. And uh, we just sold it today. And I looked oh. it up, dude, and those things are going for quite a bit. And wow. we sold it like on the cheap, man. It was like 70 bucks. We sold it for 70 bucks. Wow. But it's a NECA, it's a full size NECA alien, and the little oh, mouth yeah. opens and the little, you know, comes out. Is it the yeah. is it the Kenner version? Um no, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't have the squeeze thing on the back. Oh, it's okay. fully it's uh, all articulated. Really mm. nice. So I'm hoping he loses it so that you know someone else <laughs> buys it. He put it on layaway, so let's let's hope. <laughs> <laughs> it comes out but yeah we've seen some strange stuff man come oh, in I bet. every once in a while the weirdest thing i ever saw was an armadillo bag it was an actual little armadillo it had the little like legs and the little that would have been cool <laughs> little tail and the little head oh. and i was like what the hell is this and you open it up and it was all like really nice velvet on the inside mm. And I looked it up to see if there was anything like it, and there's like a market for those, and uh, they run from a thousand to two thousand dollars. Living wrong line of work, man. For a little armadillo bag, I was like, man, that's mm. cool. So yeah, that, that's, and it's, guys, it's, of late, you know, it's just been guns. People are buying. Oh guns yeah, I bet. Like mad, dude. Like today, I sold. I was telling you, like in the green room, I sold like two ARs and uh, a Ooh. pug, fucking semi-auto shotgun bunch of stuff dude and i'm like why would you want a semi-auto shotgun <laughs> eh, i don't know the, the, for the eclipse the for the eclipse kind of, yeah. i know it's about to go down the demons man <laughs> the demons. i guess they gotta send saying? out my, my son had to sign a waiver and get these special glasses they're gonna take them outside Monday. yeah yeah my son like too they had right. to sign a, a, a permission slip to look now, at they, the in my eclipse. day they'd be like Make sure your son brings sunglasses to school on this date, or he's going to be blind. <laughs> pretty much, that's, that's exactly. They, that's pretty much what it they, would be. They canceled school over here because of the really, like, really, yeah. Huh. What were you saying in the green room that we have to stock up on supplies for? Like, uh, two weeks? I mean, they're they're saying that because they, they're like expecting a lot of people like on in certain cities or towns because that's where the. Like it's gonna be visible, like really, really, like yeah. Visible. It's only gonna be visible, I think, here between like, and I'm on the East Coast right now, so it's like twelve thirty. Yeah. Oh, so wow. I think it's like a two between like two and four p.m. Yeah, which is cool because like I'll be on my way home. So hopefully there's like no, no accident on the interstate. Like it's a big, big interstate where I live. It's very dangerous. People there's are gonna no be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> there's also some i saw a tiktok I, I, i'm gonna look it up right now but they uh mentioned that there there's something called demon face syndrome what oh, apparently you're, you're gonna like see distorted faces during the eclipse no, so, what? what yeah that's fucking let me let me look it up i think this okay. is they're trying to implant a thought it's what they, this is inception is what this is i gotta yeah. i gotta see this man i gotta well i mean that's another conspiracy right that uh, everything's already just they're, they're trickling everything out so that they can prepare us for whatever is, is going to happen <sighs> especially the that whole we were talking about this last time with julius about the whole uh the dome in vegas that projects like those those images onto the, the dome look like real yeah the holograms yeah. so they're preparing us for that so that it's like oh yeah you know it's just another day with aliens yeah. falling out of the sky and stuff yeah. like that. So. We tried to tell you. Uh, when? <laughs> yeah, in all those Senate hearings. You mean the ones that you said that uh, you couldn't talk about anymore after outside of the hearing? You mean those? About just the, the little bullshit Nintendo footage you showed of oh, something yeah. going through there? Like, uh, well, yeah. We, we <laughs> Show them the grainiest that. film we got. Show them that. Yeah. That, that should be enough. Yeah. yeah. Shit. I mean, come on, man. Hey, as this total solar eclipse. Uh oh, here we go. Now, mind you, play it. 
Oh, he looks uh, trustworthy. <laughs> that this demon face. Can you hear it? Yeah. Um, has just become a thing and people are talking about it. But me personally, I think all of this is tying into each other because the solar eclipse is already a spiritual significant day of these two celestial bodies doing what they're doing. And we both know the sun and the moon has a spiritual effect mm -hmm. on our spiritual significant. So yeah, logically, I'm going to think that, yeah, people might start seeing people for who they actually are. People might start seeing demon faces on people. It, it, it only it makes sense, and that's their excuse. Their excuse is, oh, it's a syndrome now, and people are experiencing this. No, it's things are getting a lot more spiritual, and things are becoming a lot more clear, and the veil is lifting. So they're going to come out with some excuse of why people are seeing the truth. Things have been getting a lot more spiritual since 2020 lockdown. And they're trying to gain full control of this natural occurrence and put their own spin to it. Because why is why is CERN starting up their particle accelerator on the same day as this solar eclipse? Why? It sounds like some sci-fi shit. It sounds like something out of a movie. Like they're trying to go extra measures until they fuck around and find out and then we all doomed and then and then they mess up the harmonic balance of this world and that's why people might start seeing demon faces on people and people faces shape-shifting and shit this is just my thoughts and it's very well logically put but i'm not gonna say this is, this is a solid thing i'm just articulating my thoughts in the way that i see it in the way that i'm connected guys let me know what y'all think about this in the comments if you haven't heard of me, well, you don't want to know what I think, <laughs> sir. Oh. It's like I, um, back glad. in the, the, the Y two K thing. Do you remember the Y two K thing that oh, when uh, when Y two K hits, you can't go outside, you can't look out the window because there's gonna be demons walking around. And do you remember that shit? I, I was a that. senior in high school. Like I graduated in '99, so like I, mean, I was really baked that night. So my <laughs> man, it was cool. If 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 I was ready, I suppose. I kept looking at my, uh, I remember after I cut my TV on, I'm like, it's like 1210. I was like, oh, we're good. We're safe. We're safe. We're alive. We're, we're good. The world didn't end after all. Um, well, what was the day that it would reset all the clocks back to 19? Yeah, well, it was going to mess up the banking software. Yeah. It was going to mess up all the code. Number or zeros yeah. or something. I mean, uh, at least we got office space out of Y2K. That was really the premise of that movie. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, well, I'm glad to see the uh, one of the lead singers of PM Don's lost a lot of weight. And, uh, <laughs> so, but uh, I'm glad he's doing well. Um, but I don't know the he may be related to Herschel Walker because there for a while he was talking about demon babies all the time and was one of the little demon babies. I remember but, that. Uh, <laughs> but I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Maybe just don't go outside Monday if you're worried about seeing demon faces everywhere. I mean, just the, maybe just the watch demon it on the internet. Really, demon faces doesn't really bother me. It's the CERN thing that kind of like mm. that makes me think twice. You know, like why is it, is another time traveling weasel going to save us this time? I don't know. I know. I know. <laughs> it's, just, it's, like, it's just one of those things. Like Cat Williams said, like, like that's a coincidence. He's like, sir, sir, there are no coincidences. I don't. I mean, when it comes to things like, like to to hear that there are no coincidences, that's a that's a strange feeling. To it makes you feel like you're out of control. Like, I think a lot of it's funny when they say that as you know we're free, and then there. I'll get deep on you for a second. Like, go ahead. Two hundred years ago, we had like freedom because you weren't concerned about every little thing. Like the world wasn't as accessible to you. You could act on any in idiosyncrasy, any like, Oh, I want to know this. Like, Oh, well, you, 
the information age has made you a slave to having to know things. Like, there's some things that maybe you just don't want to know. And some things that maybe you shouldn't see. But we were running around 200 years ago just trying to explain our places in the world, I guess. You know, now people are trying to eliminate other people's places in the world just for shits and giggles. Like people try to destroy people now just to see if they can. Yeah. Just just because they're unhappy with their own lives. So, um, but my advice to most people is just, you know, get, you know, have some family, you know, friends, uh, find something that you love, that you're passionate about and talk about it, do it, experience it, share it with others. You know, if there's like, if you could introduce someone to something that's spreading the knowledge in a good way. Like, you shouldn't be running around fearing things all the time. Just don't fear the future. Embrace the present. I know that sounds corny, but uh, <laughs> I've seen the worst that this world has had to offer. I have. I've fought it. Um, Jeez. It's not as bad as you think. Because a lot of people, like, and, and from my perspective, the majority of the people... I say 30 and below, and I'm going to point at you, college-educated people that say that you hate America, you've never left it. Go outside of it. Mm -hmm. And then you tell me that that there's a big problem here. It's like You want to talk about entitlements and all this stuff. Uh, the only thing anybody should be entitled to, I think, in, I, I would say in the world, I'm not going to be I guess I can go ahead and say the world is opportunity. Just have an opportunity to succeed. Not every country has that. But when you're doing a medium like comics, um, you can make, if you can make one person's day like forgettable, like, you know, you had a shitty day and then you're like, oh, I read this comic. And man, did I just, I just forgot about all that bullshit. Just for, just for two hours, mm -hmm. I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. Like my comic might cost, you know, X amount of money, but if you read it more than 10, 20 times, I hope you do. You just got your money's worth, and you have saved this. You know, collectively, you have made that part of your life better because you're not worried. Worry will age you. It will beat you down. It will. It can kill you. Like mm -hmm. my grandmother worried herself to death, worked herself to death, worrying about her kids, and their maladies, and she never sat down and enjoyed herself much. Yeah. You got to do that. Like she worked herself to death. She died of cancer. Um, but I, no, it's fine. I mean, it happens. But I had always took in my, you know, like me and my father don't have the greatest relationship. So I want to be the best father I can for my children. If you see something messed up, don't kick the can down the road. Do something, man. That's just how I was raised. That's, that's just how, that's why I joined the military. Because I saw something, I saw an injustice happen on a Tuesday in September, mid-September in 2001. Mm. I was working at Hershey Chocolates, wearing a hairnet, third shift. I had just, I was trying to, uh, I was trying to bang his girl I was with, and we were <laughs> had to, after work, and my mom went home. I was with my mom, and uh, this is a funny story, but this changed my life, and I wouldn't be here today if 9-11 had never happened, because uh, I didn't cut the TV on for the first time probably in forever. Me and her were drinking and whatever, and she had to go, and I was mad. And and a phone call comes. It's my grandmother, same one I was just talking about. I was like, "What are you doing?" She's like, "Uh, she's crying." I was like, "Oh God, what happened?" She's like, "Cut the TV on." I was like, "What channel?" She's like, "Any channel." And that right there, like, you talking about the the, the cold sweat, those. 
that's a horror that's a horror movie right there it's like okay um saw the second plane hit live Shame couldn't man. stop watching it didn't go to sleep all day mm. went to work that night it was completely silent i usually i usually at that time i'd roll up and blast in pantera or something like that went to went to work uh with the radio off didn't want to listen to the news didn't listen to music couldn't stop thinking about it got to work looking at my friends the the big baseball fan like the that was the the money ball year didn't give a shit didn't care we just looked at each other as we're walking you know like laughing and back in the day walking with our lunch back just stone cold sober man nobody talking Got in there. They gave us a little pep talk. So anybody needs to go home. You got family. You need to go because I live near Washington D.C. Yeah, Pentagon get, got hit. Not a lot of people. People remember the towers and Flight ninety three. People yeah. forget about the Pentagon. Well, um, I don't know if it was lack of sleep or just like I was laying in bed, couldn't sleep for three days. Just couldn't sleep. Uh. I joined the military. Joined the army. Uh, no, I don't regret it. I did what I did. Got out. Went to college. Um, met some lifelong friends. Met some assholes. With, like with any job. Um, but I met the guy who we got together with the Mythicals. And um, I saw an injustice happen. And I, I did my part. Like and I wasn't. I'm like I, My granddad did the same thing with World War II. So I felt like I owed my dowry, my tithe for freedom. So, you know, you can call me what you want. You can say what you want. Um, but that made me who I am. That made me do what I do. That made me the drive and the determination and the, I don't give a shit. I will tweet it all day until someone looks at it. I just kept poking i kept knocking on doors i stuck my foot in there um can't get rid of me now i mean you can try to cancel me good luck what what is there to cancel um i'm the same dude here that you can check my police record i'll be honest with you it's not great um (laughs) but we all stumble we all fall but it's what you do afterwards Mm -hmm. it will determine the character of a person because yeah. once you get like they say everybody's got a plan until you get hit in the mouth oh yeah like, that's what mike tyson said right yeah. i hope he remembers this no i didn't chris i didn't um but <laughs> i hope he beats the hell out of that logan paul guy or this humanity really is fucked like it, we have jumped the shark and it, that guy's beating mike tyson i just want I just want that other dude to come out with will smith and dj jazzy jeff singing the song <laughs> <laughs> so we can really make a show out of it, make some money. I ain't gonna buy it because I haven't bought boxing since Tyson bit Holyfield's ear off. I used to be a big boxing fan. We get it for free uh, in what is so it's yeah. it's fine. We'll there you go. Watch it for free. Arturo Gotti was my boxer. It was my guy. I love that guy. But uh so like I said, that makes that made me who I am. It's, you can't get rid of me. I love what I do. I'm I'm not a douchebag. I am. I can be. But I'm a respectful person, and I thank every single person before and after a stream, because that's the professional thing to do. No. Like they say, this is this isn't a profession. It's not really. I'm not a professional. I'm a professional amateur. Um. So, but I try to treat it like a business, and I try to treat it like a like a karma based industry because I sure. think every industry is a karma based industry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It will come back because people talk. It's a small circle. It's a smaller circle than you think. Word gets around on reputation real fast. I mean, we just witnessed that, no? A few days ago? Yes, we did. Yeah. Yeah. It's unfortunate. I didn't know the guy. I hadn't heard of him until that day. I mean, if you had just looked at a picture, I'd have said, let's the fourth beastie boy. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) That's all. No, no pun. I mean, no harm intended. It's just an observation. Yeah. Um, but boy, the power of uh, social media and the power of bullshit. 
I guess. power of bullshit and the power of uh, tribalism and and um the it's this is a process this is a formula they have it down and nobody's better at eating their own than someone on the left mm. the right are quick to disown but they won't try to destroy that person they will distance themselves and cut them off like that but when it comes to i mean you want to call them a socialist whatever you want to call them like that other side of the aisle they will eat each other it's like the it, it, it like they're like the sith like they will they always not strike down the other one to get get ahead they will do what they can and these people are professionals of destroying lives and i think eventually you have to stand up and like if i would have been that guy and they said that i'm like yeah it was a mistake so the fuck what there're no charges and it would have been dropped right there and if you don't want to support me anymore i understand that it wasn't a crime but like the compound of i think what i've analyzed it a little bit like just on the peripheral like people talking about it like i think what really set the wheels in motion for him to write that post and to do what he did was taking that art gallery show away man that hurt it was it was a lot of things dude because it was the piling it was it was all that i mean i go ahead I was going to say, I am disappointed that he chose that because yes. I wanted to for his family it for his side, you know, like, yeah. and, and being, I mean, oh, man, it's, it's difficult, you know, because I've, I've seen that I've, I've had friends that have done that and we don't that get answers true. and that's what fucking sucks. Like you need some sort of closure. You need some sort of answer. And when you just blatantly just don't give us that or at least try to that just leaves a lot of questions that yeah. will never be answered because people then can write your story for you never let another man write your story yeah so, but they, yeah. they took what he, what he loved dude they, they, they took, took it away, away the, from him the comments, dude. yeah like the uh they took the the art show or the gallery show away they, they took away the YouTube, his, the his YouTube. contract he had his a contract with, with Abraham, dude, 75 grand Mm, I didn't know about that. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's tough, man. When somebody rips away your livelihood and then pisses on it and sets it on fire and then laughs at you while they're doing it, boy, man, it takes a special person to be able to handle that with with grace and to just not uh, let it get to you. I mean, things would get to me. Think some people have attacked my, you know, said something about my family online, and like I know they don't know my family or anything like that. But still, as a man, as a husband, as a father, dude, say that shit and say it to my face and see what happens mm-hmm. because I will Got make him. you bite your ear. I will hit you so hard you will never think of saying that to another man again. Um, so a lot of, a lot of people yammering away online. I would <laughs> had their face like punched in. Like, they, yeah, they haven't, they haven't felt the fucking fist right in their fucking face. Mm-hmm. I guess they need to, cause yeah, they would, I would, people wouldn't say shit. Yeah, I've, I've had that happen to me plenty of times. So yeah, yes. I, I, I get a, you get a good <laughs> respect for for life and you know, what people mm-hmm. think, but it's it's just one of those things, man. And it's it's on both sides, you know. Honestly, like we can't hear his side, and she hasn't said anything anymore. Mm-hmm. And, it's just that whole, it's that whole emptiness, and people that shouldn't even be talking are talking, and it, it, it's not going to get sorted out. It's not going to yeah. get sorted out. Yeah, and people like I, I mean, I didn't feel like I had to say something, but I didn't want to be like, "Well, you didn't address it." Dude, I didn't know. I didn't know that guy existed nine days ago. So, mm-hmm. like I said, I said there are two facts that are very apparent here: one, a man lost his life; two the finger pointing is over. And regardless if he had one fan or a million fans, those people don't get to see their favorite artist anymore. They don't get to see any new material from him anymore. Then that's the biggest, uh, that's the biggest loss here is the loss of an artist and the loss of a human being. You know, he was a, he was, he wasn't the most socially, uh, 
compatible guy, you know, like he was, a, from what I heard, he was a shut-in. He didn't have great social skills. And that's not an excuse. I'm just telling you the facts on what I hear. He's a comic book artist. It's, like it's like we said, like <laughs> in this industry, in this, mo- the majority of us are introverted. Mm-hmm. Just, and that's why, like, it was, it blew my mind when I started seeing all these people and I'm like, like, well, the formula is you got to get on YouTube. You got to build your own platform. You got to do, uh, you have to have your own YouTube channel and you have to do all this. I, I don't. I, like, I'm Generation X. I'll bum off my friends. Mm-hmm. I just don't have time, you know, or the inclination right now to to work on it. Maybe like once my kids are older and I'm not coaching little league, going to scouts, doing basketball with my mind and my physical person stretched a million ways. Mm-hmm. When I find time for this, I enjoy it. I love it. But everybody should realize my time is limited. So when I'm on your stream, I'm not saying I'm doing you a favor. I'm just saying I'm there because I want to be, not because I have to sell a book. Yeah. I, I would love to just come on and not talk about my book. Sometimes I just love to come on and talk comics and like I'm on nerd bacon tomorrow. Uh, I'm just there just to talk about trailers. I kind of know a little you, something about it. Are you going to be that first... early on with Luke? Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. I'm going to sleep on the couch as soon as the stream's over. Um, <laughs> no, it's cool. Cause it's down here. It's a fold out couch. It's like, this is my little office area and I could just, uh, I guess I'm one of those guys. Now I just roll off the stream. I'll go right to the couch, go back and, it again. Well, going going back to the Piscor thing, um, what did, what did the people like that piled on on him wanted to like gain? Are they gonna get their his job? Are they gonna are they gonna draw his books now? Or I mean, what's what's? I see people drawing tribute photos of him, which is nice, man. I because yeah, you should yeah, never but, let his memory go. But what's but the all, angle? All the, but all these guys that that started the rumors and the allegations and oh. I'm not, I'm not gonna name names because they were. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was gonna say we don't need to name names because uh, I've seen but, them. All. But yeah, but I mean, what are there like? Are you gonna draw his short the switchblade shorties now? Are you gonna draw Red Room now? Yeah. Are you gonna draw the next hip hop family tree? I mean, what what was your like? No what? goal, no goal, just destroy. Yeah. Somebody we didn't and, like. And all these people are are fucking jealous, dude. They're they're not. He, he saw he did he did it he did the hustle he saw he created the formula mm-hmm. and all all these fucking people are like why why is he getting the awards no or the or the fucking yeah. recognition recognition or yeah. the art shows and all that I mean come on guys it's so obvious that I want, you want to be that you want to do that and you just you just can't hack it you're not no, good like like my friend turned me on to the channel like after the fact like they were doing like wizard magazine reviews i used to love wizard magazine yeah and so i've watched a couple of those nice good work man stellar work yeah. makes me feel old but um uh, yeah. the world needs stuff like that like you just can't forget these things they they re- they started uploading again today oh they did yeah, because they have they have a they have a backlog of yeah know. yeah I bet they do they, they they every I think every Monday or they 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 get together and they just start recording like fucking like ten videos a day so like wow. a soap like a soap opera like when they yeah they're gonna, like, they'll they're do a bunch start, of episodes in one day yeah they're gonna start like updating up, uploading the videos I don't know if they have any interviews like planned or already recorded but yeah. It's, that sucks, man. It's uh, it sucks, man. Yeah. Well, Shit. But yeah, I mean, just, we can just learn from it. Just move on. Just try to like not. It should be a very. It should be a cautionary tale for. Don't for, don't, don't talk to people. strangers online, dude. Underage yeah. people. Yeah. Like, shit. Shit. Well, in general, I, I guess talk to any women that aren't my wife, and if they, yeah. I mean, I do, but. She knows about them, and I'll tell her. She's like, "Well, who's that?" I'm like, uh, "This is who that is." She's like, "Oh, well, she's okay. a fan." I mean, yeah. I mean, the, honestly, the the key word is tact. Yeah, have tact. tact. Yeah, you know, have some have some respect. Have tact. Act like, and, an, act like an have, adult. Yeah, act like an adult. You know, I know that's I know that's a foreign concept for you know a lot of people <laughs> in their forties around here, but oh, shit. I mean, it all turns us into giant man babies when we get in here, and a lot of people see what. I, I'd never had I had so I had Facebook up until about 2009 10 I had a psycho ex and like 
changed all my locked me out of and chain deleted everything and like put me from like assholeville for usa and all this stuff i was like i ain't going back for that dumb shit i'm not building i'm done I'm good thank you and i felt so good about it like everybody's like you gotta get on twitter all my friends i'm like that shit's dumb i don't want to do that and then i just started using it for information purposes and then of course now here i am it's 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 hard to navigate Twitter as well, man. It's, it's it takes assessment. you about I think it's oh. about two years. Oh. That's how long I've been doing it. And I think I, I'm not saying I got it clocked, but I know bullshit and I know when not to engage. And I, sometimes you just, there's some people who just can't stop replying to things and they're like, oh, just, just <laughs> stop, man, stop. You don't have to reply to everything. Oh, That's God. True. You don't have to reply to everything, and you don't have to speak out on every issue and every topic. Just because... Don't look at me like that, Oli. Don't look at me with your GGI. <laughs> like that, right? Just because they didn't like one person doesn't like X Men ninety seven, it doesn't mean you have to make a post about it every day and say how it's really. I like, I like X Men ninety seven, dude. Yeah, X Men ninety seven is fucking rocking, bro. Yeah. It's like yeah. it's like, like our novella, club. you know, like yeah. our soap opera. You know, yeah. like everyone's banging each other. There's clones. There's no. demons. There's like yeah. I heard they brought baby. in Madeline Pryor. That I might have to get Disney Plus for that. The, Did you watch Inferno, it? The Inferno storyline is. is oh, that, that was a that was a kick ass episode, man. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Yes, I man, I love that. Mm. I haven't seen Jeez. the one today. I think, I think a new one dropped today. I haven't seen yeah. that one. So. It's a, it's a, it's like uh, it has two stories in it. Mm -hmm. It's a Jubilee and uh, Sunspot like solo story with with yeah. Mojo. That was badass. Oh, oh cool! Nice. And then the next, and then the other one is uh, Forge and Storm, like. Oh, yeah. the life death? Because it's yeah. life death. That's all it is. Like yeah. They're just redoing it. Mm. So I'm wondering, like, if I just saw... I think it's a typo. He said X-Man 90s. I wonder if they introduced Nate Gray at one point. X-Man. Yeah, it's a I haven't seen X-Men 97. I'm hatching up on the old episodes. I, I thought like a, a, like a recap of all the X-Men uh, episodes. Yeah. What happened? What happened to the last season, dude? Oh, dude, that? animation went to shit. They got they got they, they got rid of too. everybody, like the writers, yeah. all of them. <laughs> and they the brought in that like that idea. weird uh, guy who kept laughing or whatever. This is kind of like weird slapstick looking guy. He was like a dimension hopper. I'm like, this is lame. Like I, I lame, think, I, lame. Think I, I stopped watching it during season three. I, I think mm. like after the. After the whole cable and bishop thing, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I stopped watching 90, 96. That's when I stopped watching it, yeah, because no, yeah, I, no, I wrote it, I wrote it to, to the wheels fell off, and they did. Um, but it would be cool for them to do like Disney would never do it because they're not smart. Uh, just do an Age of Apocalypse, like a, a three hour animated movie. <laughs> And that's what I'm also like hoping for. Like, if they do like a uh, old man Logan, you want the old man Logan uh, and animated because they, I mean, they have already the Avengers and all that. So, why not? Why not yeah. do that? Yeah. I, I want mean, the uh, Savage Land Adventure Wolverine. Yeah, that would be or cool. Do, the, what's it called where where he fights with uh, is that is that the one with Apocalypse? Yeah, that's one where it's a, it's a, it's not even apocalypse, it's like a robot apocalypse, and it almost yeah, kills them. Yeah, yeah, that was or, cool. Or, yeah. or, or do fucking uh, Hearts of Darkness, dude. That would be bad. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember Hearts Punisher. of Darkness. Yeah, Punisher, oh, Ghost man. Rider, Wolverine. Yeah, that would be part. Yeah, <sighs> that's a lot of good, good stories they could do, like a little With one. The Midnight off. Suns. That was a good one. Um, I'm thinking. I thought they were working on a movie of that, but. I didn't watch the Werewolf by Night special. I it was pretty it was, decent. I heard it was okay. Yeah, I, I, like my friend said, it worked well as a black and white. I th I think that was like the the best of all the the Disney Plus MCU mm. things. Mm. Yeah, I think that was pretty pretty nice. That's cool. <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, so night already, guys. Or um, let's show, give it a, a left show the page yeah. before we go. Show the page, and then we'll go back to to the mythicals, and then. We'll okay, go. hold on. All right, yeah. So we, we're, well, talk up, talk about the the campaign for a bit. So right now we're getting ready to push the new campaign for Six by Six Comics. It's the twentieth anniversary Border Mayhem All Stars with 
almost every single character that six by six has almost because we have almost because we have so many. Um, I wrote the story. Pancho also wrote the story. We we assisted each other, um, and we have four different artists that are drawing it. We have uh, Dario, of course, Mr. Oliver Arce right there in front of you. Um, Javier and uh, Domo are all drawing parts of the book. It's a uh, what? Twenty four pages, right? Twenty four pages. Exactly. Twenty four pages. So each part, each each part is six pages, and each uh, artist um, draws their part. But it's everybody, man. It's like this crazy secret wars, multiverse, oh, battle nice. world. Fucking, it's nuts, dude. Like, there's like, I don't even know how to describe it. There's like chupa zombie chupacabras. There's a junk man fighting everybody. It's, it's just insanity. All the greatest, you know, all the great heroes are there. You got Man Dog. You got uh, Zombie Rider, Carmesi. The chicas clave, all the all the six by six stable of characters are there, and uh, we're starting to get pages. Pages are starting to trickle in, and here's Javi's take on the man dog. So that ass, right? <laughs> I love it. So man. It's just one it. one big story, and every, and we're, you're chopping it up uh, with the artists. Each get six yeah. pages. Okay, because six yeah, page stories, uh, those are hard. Oh, tell me about it's it. Like, I, mean, it I, I did one for Luke Stone, and uh, yeah still waiting on they're like chapters yeah yeah like little chapters um and i tried to play to each artist's strengths so that we could get the best you know work out of them and stuff like dario of course he has those these big splash pages and it's just intense action Mm -hmm. uh oliver's the same javi does this kind of work right here which is a little bit more intimate a little bit more close up with the character like the 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 personalities come through and then domo of course as well so we uh you know try to to play to each artist's strengths and make this like this really kick-ass book the cover of course is by mr rich ayala himself the cover is just intense also man um so we're getting ready to to launch this one hopefully i forgot when you said you're gonna launch it in july probably in july july Get all the pages in and stuff like that. So, yeah, so here it is. It's, uh, here it is. Six by six comics. Border Mayhem All Stars. I keep calling it like Border All Stars Mayhem and Mayhem nah. Border Stars All and all. Oh. Stuff. <laughs> <Weird shit. laughs> so the sign up page is there. You guys, please go over, sign up. If you already signed up, share it. Let's get a lot of eyes on this. Uh, we're trying to think of things to um, to provide as far as incentives are concerned once the book goes live. We're, so, we're, uh, we're thinking of a trading card set. but Trading card set for sure. We have a very... I don't know if we're still... You haven't given me information on the main thing that we want to provide. No. Uh, it's, it's, uh, no. Classified. <laughs> wow. It's spoilery. It's spoilery. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's, no, no. I just want to know if we're still doing it. Oh, yeah. We're doing it. We're doing it. Oh, okay, then. Cool. Because I was about to say, like, all that fucking work for nothing? What the uh, hell, man? <laughs> we're doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> but yeah, it's, so yeah, it's, yeah, we're we're still working on the. I mean, we're working on the on the story right now on the comic, uh, Dario, and and how we are drawing it right now. We still need to, Domo and I, haven't had time to do the, our layouts, but we need to work on those quick because yeah, the time deadline is approaching. But six pages, yeah, no no sweat. Yeah, Hope. this was fun <laughs> as fuck to write. I will tell you that yeah. right now. Um. It's a big they sandbox, wouldn't, man. They wouldn't, yeah, but they, they wouldn't let me fucking kill everybody. Like I was, like this the first draft. Like supposed to shoot everybody and the kill, first draft, kill dude, those and and murdering characters man. left and right. It was fucking mm. awesome. We're, we're gonna just shooting at people. <laughs> <laughs> so then I started blasting right and um. <laughs> That's but yeah, it. these guys had to reel me in because they're like, "Hey, whoa, whoa, you can't kill this guy." Like, why not? Like, you said every fair game, everything's cool. And they're like, "No, no, no, don't, don't kill them. Just you know, do something yeah. else with them." Like, so we had to go back. Um, so yeah, so I, mean, I had to go back with a huge eraser. You know? Yeah, pretty much. Don't get me wrong. There's some mm. characters that die. They do die. Um, but the the that, that journey, it, it's it's interesting because those characters that died died in other stories, like in their original stories. Okay. Like, that kind of fits. <laughs> mm. it's, it's exactly. Uh, so, so who's the guy with the uh, the 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 little uh, high neck cape uh, on the left, far left? That's Sturbin. Go ahead, okay. Oni. This one's Sturbin. Yeah, that's uh, that's one of my characters when I, I created way way back in the day. Uh, originally he was named Sammy Rider because it was a uh, an homage to Kamen Rider, a Japanese character mm. superhero. Yeah. 
Yep. Yeah, but I mean, knowing us, we gotta make it a horror theme, horror based. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so yeah, we, we created. We, I created that, and it was just like a little jam I did with with Dario, the the artist for Cryptonos. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's do something like let's let's work on something quick, and it was cool because we had a studio in downtown Juarez, and mm-hmm. I just sat down. I Pancho wrote the script, and I was just like, yeah, let's just draw this like. And then I just handed up, handed the page to Dario. And he would be next to me inking it. So it was like a little nice. cool assembly line. That's awesome. And then the, the energy, like I want to replicate that energy again, but yeah, I, I can't. It's, it's kind yeah. of difficult when okay. you're in other states. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That bullpen, the fucking yeah. Uh, like I heard, I hear things sometimes that like it wasn't even really like that, but well. It couldn't be any worse than you know what you got now. I bet you those people don't even talk to each other. Like, Everyone like here's the pages. Home. Yeah. I mean, no. uh, uh, there, there there are times that I've I've invited Dario to draw like the cryptonal patches for the floppies. Mm-hmm. Because he would sit here like in the back, just like inking his pages. Nice. And, yeah. Or or like, oh, you know what? You 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 missed this. So do it again. <laughs> Dry yeah. again. So yeah, he would he would sit here with the light table and just like go over like the artwork and shit like that. So yeah. The Mecenas had a certain synergy to it, man. It was it was yeah. you can't you can't like recreate that. It was just a one time thing. And it's it's it sucks because there was so much there was so much energy coming out of that place. People were like so creative and like yeah. it, it just shone through. And the times that I did visit, I just wanted to stay there. You know, I just wanted to yeah. fucking just Yeah, that was, that was the, the place and the time that we formed all our all our group, no? Mm-hmm. And so we, yeah. met, we met Dario, Rex also joined the crew. Uh Javi came in way later, but I mean it's just the core the core group of six five six was formed there. And yeah, man, it's just it, it, it can be recaptured again, that, that energy that that Oh, well, true. it's hard to catch lightning in a bottle twice. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Definitely, man. Definitely. So we're trying. We're trying to show you that with uh, the 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 twentieth anniversary book, kind of like where we're all at as far as all the characters that we created. A lot of these characters were created by the artists that are involved in the book. So it's kind of it's kind of fun to see them drawing them again after they haven't drawn them for such a long time. Mm-hmm. And uh, hopefully, you enjoy it because the story, the, the art, everything was just tied together in a way where it, it captures the whole six by six comics like like passion yeah. center whatever you want to call it so and i'm and i'm digging the the little tidbits like little the little write-ups you're doing ray oh the little you said well we have so many characters man we gotta start uh, I, 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 you know, some I, of the, the only thing that sucks is you're using old artwork <laughs> What's yeah. that? We have better artwork now. And but, I mean, artwork, man. Like, come on. And, and it's work with me here. It's it like, like here. pulling <laughs> teeth here, you know. I gotta ask Javi for pages that you should be showing me. You don't. Yeah, like see. like the like the jug man. You have the jug man. I you know, I want to. I actually want to do this, but in video form now, with new art and probably a voiceover, mm-hmm. AI voiceover. What do you have like AOL? Look how slow that uh, thing is. Going. Yeah, dude, uh, it's, it's Twitter. Twitter is slow. Over here. I don't know why. Fuck Twitter. Or X. <laughs> so yeah, look there you go. It fucking oh nice blurred out. Picture. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm thinking of doing like little videos, like just to help promote the sign up page. Totally. I'll do the voiceover unless you want to use AI, like you're using for everything else and shit. I mean, can go wrong with AI. Yeah, I I saw this one like either yesterday or today. Zombie Rider, yeah. Zombie Rider, yeah. Where did you you get the name Sturbin? I'm. I'm, I've been. Sturbin means, I think, to die or death, and and German in German. Oh, really? German, yeah. I thought it was a play off of the word disturbing. Yeah, me too. Disturbing. Yeah, disturbing. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was it was a playoff. Not I mean, disturbing. Yeah, that, that could be cool. I mean, like that's disturbing, cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's cool, man. Yeah. So yeah, we'll we'll keep them. We'll keep shooting them out 
give me more art. Give me art that you want me to yeah, show. I'll, so, I'll do a little. You know, do a Dropbox or something, and I'll, yeah. I'll go from there. But um, I'll just, I'll just uh, and I'll repurpose your post and put the new art and shit. And... <laughs> yeah, go right ahead, sir. You... <laughs> I, 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 I will do ask permission, dude. I'll, I'll just do it. Yeah, you're just gonna do it. My soul is already <laughs> sold to Six Six Comics, so it doesn't really matter. Yes. <laughs> you see exactly. Stop laughing like an anime villain. Anyway, yeah, let's go back. German. 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 Let's go back to the mythicals before we close out. Um, any last words? Anything you want to say? I know you're closing it out. Uh, you said Friday. Yeah. Um, and what can we expect next? Why should we pick up the mythicals other than you know everything that we already talked about? Give us your spiel, man. Go for it. Because I mean, like, we're at a good. It's a good story. It's a great story. But it's going to make you care about the characters. Like, I mean, yeah, you're going to have these cool action sequences, but at the end of the day, it's the characters that make up the book. Like, if if I don't care about you, like when I back a book, if I don't care about your characters. Like, if I don't ask questions, if I don't want to know about these characters, I'm sorry, man, I'm out. I've got better things to do with my time, better books to read. If you can't, if you can't capture me with that, um, look, books are. At the, printer nothing to worry about oh nice um, great like i'm saying it's uh and in friday just doing this now like the next couple of days because like friday i'll probably be dead to the world at mm. this time i know i'll be uh probably snoring friday <laughs> but uh where are you where like, are you printing these books by the way with a non-local printer like far okay away. Oh, oh far away, away. yes Over- overseas possibly yes what you think? I, I mean, uh, I mean, <laughs> economics, dude. Economics. Yeah. yeah. Like, in order for a price point to be, like, I would like to be breaking. E- like, I told about, I tell people, like, if you're, if you come into this level to do this at my level to try to make money, like, I want to make money off of, then you are dumb, unless you have the next Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. That's just it. Unless you have a hot shit property that's. A, a, a rocket that like when you got when you dropped your sign up page you got a thousand sign ups uh you're not making any money you gotta grind it out it's it's hard work yeah um I just wanted to break even I just want to break even maybe like if I make five dollars I'll give it to a food bank uh or I'll, or I'll go buy my 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 son a comic nice or contribute it, you know, I, I will redistribute it, the wealth, I will buy, I will use that to back other books. Like, I do buy, I do back books. Um, so, it, it's 13 issues, like, we're just getting started, it's a perfect jumping on point, and ain't gonna stop, and we'll go ahead and drop issue 3 in August, when I turn 43. God! Damn. So, like, I try to, I, like, me and, you know all this, right? Like everybody knows all this. Yeah. Like we came up with a little plan, like maybe every eight months. I know that seems like a long time, but this campaign's been going for five months already. So by the time the books are distributed and you're getting your books, the next one is just a couple months away. You can have time to di- digest this, get amped, get hyped for the next one, and then we just rinse repeat until this bitch is out i would love to make enough money to where i can just do like you know samedi does like five issues at once or he'll yeah. drop i would love to have the capital buffer to produce the next two issues when i see you again that way i can get this shit out of my system faster you get the whole story be done with it love it put 13 issues on the shelf never touch it again because i'm not coming back to it like, oh really? Even though I don't, even though I don't read manga and stuff, like I yeah. do pick up what they're putting down. Like I know why people have abandoned some Western comics to go to that because it's a big, it's a story, it's a volume, it's all killer, no filler. Mm-hmm. I'm not yeah. writing for the trade, you know. I'm not stretching these out because oh, I got it. I I got to contract for 10 issues i gotta stretch this out it's 13 issues because it needs to be 13 issues in the story literally and then i'm gonna move on to other projects but weave some stuff in and in and out you know we'll see if i actually do an actual graphic novel 
since I've been fiddling the floppies, you know. But are you I have are, other you, ideas. are you doing Kickstarter also with with already already did Kickstarter with this one, but man, it, it was open for sixty days and then gone. It was How I much just tonight outfunded that one. I made okay. nineteen fifty one, and see, here's the thing. I have uh, how many backers are on this one? Like fifty one, something like that. Uh, right. I had seventy one backers on Kickstarter. Do you want backers? Yeah, yeah. yeah I had seventy one on that one, and nineteen fifty one. You know what that tells you? It's a lot of digital. Mm. So a lot of that digital. Like, yeah. uh, can you imagine how much money I'm leaving on the table if I'm not offering yeah. a digital option? People were just like, I saw this guy today. He's like, I can't offer a digital because that's like getting my comic for free. And uh, I was like, you know how short sighted that is? Like, people are still good. He was like, it, 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 I don't want people that don't want physical books. I want comic readers. Okay, dude, you're leaving the digital money on the table because that doesn't cost you anything. The PDF doesn't cost you anything to produce. You know what I see digital sales are? is a way to enter a foreign market. That's a worldwide market because I had to do it from a country I had to look up on a map. And was, that really doesn't happen with me often. And I was like, oh, well, that's not that's not real. It's not a real country. Well, yeah, it is. So that's also free shipping money, dude. These books cost money to ship. It costs money for these Gemini mailers. I just got two of them in today. Two big boxes of them in today. That shit ain't cheap. They're not free. Like, well, that's what the shipping's for. Yes, but you still have to buy it. So all that shipping money that you collected, that extra eight to ten bucks per backer, why don't you take shave that off there? And that's what your real total is. And and also with digital, you can even add more pages to the yeah to the book. yeah. Yep. And and that could be a selling point. Oh, the digital has a behind the scenes section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, yep. not That's visible. Yeah, I've thought of that. Like a making of. I used to yeah, love those. I mean, books. Just add add content to it and yeah. Oh shit! So I'm getting this. So I mean, like, and then you know you learn from your first campaign to your second campaign. Yeah. You notice on this one, I'm not given all these stretch goals. Uh, it was cool at first, but that's more overhead. It's more money out the door. So yeah, we got, we got to be careful wanted... with the with the stretch goals because yeah, man, I'm not in, in, in crypto. Knows we had a stretch goal, the the Polaroids. Remember, right? Yeah, that was right. gonna cost more than the fucking book. Oh, <laughs> that can't be, that, and that can't be possible, man. That's I, I, that's wrong. Yeah, we I want to do that. these challenge coins, like these metal coins, yeah. like they give them out in the, the military all the time when they don't want to spend the time to write up an actual award or give you an actual medal. They're like, here, get have a coin. Yeah. Uh, those things are expensive. I saw a guy offering them. I'm like, well, you braver than me, bro. All right. And you got deeper pockets than me. Yeah. I ain't doing that. I got trading cards or a, <laughs> or a, or a mini print. That's how I roll. Yeah. But it, you're still anything, you can, offer it. Yep. anything you can stuff in the fucking comic bag. Like, and I had a beer, I had beer. Co- I got beer koozies too. Guess what? Yeah. They collapse and fill yeah. fit right inside the Gemini mailer and actually helps the comic not slide around so much. So yeah, exactly. Um, so you know, I tried to think outside the box because it says I drink and I read comics. What do you do? That's funny. That's cool. People are like, oh, that's great. Like you have to be able to sell these things. But that's not. I'm not selling merchandise. I'm selling comics. That's just a bonus. Yeah, the merchandise needs to like enhance the book. No. Yeah, I don't have T-shirts. Yeah. My 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 perks or my add-ons and all that stuff they make sense. Like you know, like the like I said, the case file on the back of the trading cards. Because it's some government sanctioned sponsored team, you know, and, and they, they have case files. Yeah, yeah. and they're redacted, and people are like, "Ooh, I wonder what's behind the redaction." Yeah, Keep reading. It's all about the immersion, man. Yeah, immersion. Yeah, like it's uh, what what, is, what did Chris Rock say on a special? Is like the drug dealer doesn't get paid on that first sample, that first free sample. They get paid on the comeback. Yeah, like I gave you some, some freebies, and I gave you that cool trailer at the first one. Well, now you're coming back and actually buying the book. Like this is, this is good shit. And I've had good reviews. I don't like to read. I don't like one of those people. Like, I guess an, if I were an actor, I would never watch like 
reviews or read reviews of my movies yeah. or anything like that. I'm too emotionally fragile. <laughs> I can't handle criticism. Yeah, right. I'm married and I was in the army. Criticism is like my second middle name. Mm. It's why didn't you do this instead of thank you, honey? So uh, criticism goes with the territory. Criticism is valid because it helps you grow. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's why I that's went on with Well Read and uh, Aldous with my first book and they ripped it up in the beginning and tore it apart. And guess what? I shuffled some things around. I listened. I didn't say, well, you guys don't know what you're talking about. My shit's awesome. Uh, <laughs> I listened. I learned. I applied myself. And I took that criticism. And the book was better for it. And they know it. Just listen. Just Sometimes people are, are just trying to help. I don't listen to unsolicited advice. If I ask you a question, it means I value your opinion. And I want to know. I'm not always going to listen to it. Because I make my own decisions. For, good or, for better or worse. But I do seek out advice and criticism, like a, not really validation, but I want to make the best product I can for the people who read my books. And I will do anything I can to make that happen, to be a better writer. I write all the time. I write shit all the time. Um, like I used to write, I used to watch movies and write a better sequel or rewrite the movie and say, this is terrible. This is what I would do. Like Alan, yeah. I found out Alan Moore said that he was like, "Read bad books." Oh, you read bad book? You know what good books can be, right? Like, yeah. I I I think that that's how uh, that's what I like about working with with these guys in the studio because we're very critical of of each other, yeah. of, of each other's work. I mean, yeah, and you know, I'm in a DM group with a bunch of people. Luke Stone's one of them. Yeah. We bounce ideas off of each other all of the time. And he was like, you know, sometimes somebody will drop something and we're like, man, this sucks. But let me tell you why. Yeah. And here's how you fix it. Because there are actual, like Eric Hodson, who did these cards. He's in that group. He knows. He He's, and I'm not going to bust out the artist, but it's a very prominent artist. And it's not Ethan or John Malin or Shane. Uh, but it was a picture that he did. And he was like, um, everybody fawns over this guy. What's wrong with this picture? And I looked at it. I was like, I don't know. It looks like his forearms growing out of his quadricep to go the other way. He was like, thank you. Now, if you saw it, I know damn well the person who drew this saw it. Mm -hmm. And all of the sycophants underneath of him are like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Let me lick your ass, please. Um, I don't roll that way, man. Like, I... It, <laughs> I... <t> <laughs> I don't uh I don't kiss anybody's ass, I don't kiss anybody's ring, I bow down to no one but my wife and my family because I honor and I respect them, I love them. Mm. Um I do everything for them. This is what I do here. Sometimes these streams at like eight o'clock PM, which is right when we bring our kids to bed, which is when my wife would like to sit down and see me and talk to me. I can't because I'm on a stream. But she understands it's 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 caused a little bit of a rift. But after the first book, she looked at me. She's like, I'm proud of you. I hate this, but I love you. And I know that this nice. means something to you. I, I know she wishes I would have failed, but she'll never say it <laughs> because she's a good wife. And she knows that this since she's known me, I've constantly complained about comic books. I'm like, can you believe what they're doing? And now she's like, you're happy because you don't have to deal with that bullshit anymore. Like I said, it's like it was like a bad marriage. I got divorced and I got a, I got a new, ch I got a new chick that uh, she treats me a lot better. And uh, I have people that are grateful. The one thing that really soured me, like completely, <laughs> uh, amongst other things, like with with the mainstream comic industry is they straight up and i saw it with and i i have read it and i saw them say it with their own lips it's not for you anymore this isn't yours the audacity of you people um you you're in the comic industry and you're writing these things you never wanted to be there you're only using it as a stepping stone to be a pundit somewhere or to work for the new york times or whatever your newspaper of choice is and you don't care about none of this shit. You don't care about the, the, the characters you're destroying. And you have a great disdain 
for the fans of this genre. And it's quite evident. And when I heard that and I saw that, I just like, man, I'm done. Like, you know, you're not going to get any more of my money. Now I will buy some Hulk from time to time. Like the new stuff. Like I bought the Immortal Hulk run in the beginning. I Like we're horror guys, right? I'm a Hulk fan. You'd think I would love it. I hate it. I can't stand it. I don't think the Hulk should be a straight up, like a, uh, a, a horror story. It should be a psychological horror, sure. And but I think he's his best when he's on the run from the army because that's what made them. That's what made made it the misunderstood mm-hmm. monster instead of just the monster. Didn't like Planet Hulk either. I like the uh, the only non Hulk smash version of the Incredible Hulk I like was the Joe Fix It run. Mm. That made me fall in love with Peter David, and then he took over X Factor, and then I was hooked. I read everything the man put. Dude could he could write his uh, uh, an order for a diner, and I would still read it. No. Everybody praises Claremont like Peter David's my guy. Like I said, B sides. So, <laughs> <laughs> so when they told me that, like I'm done. You're not getting any more of my shit. The, even the the new Incredible Hulk runs even worse. But uh, I just I can't do it anymore. Like in good conscience, like. I will not give my money to someone who hates me. That's why I haven't bought Disney Plus. Because I know they, for the majority, they, they hate people like me. And they hate anybody that doesn't march in lockstep 100%. See, that's what I hate about uh, was a group mentality, mob mentality. It's You might be 99% with us, but it's that 1% we can't tolerate. I don't do purity tests, fellas. I even put out a tweet about that this morning. You can shove it right up your ass. Because I know who I am, I know what I am, and I know what I'm about. And if you want to challenge me on that, let's have a debate. Isn't that the new thing right now? Anybody that says mom mentality is a is a red flag now? Like flag, flag it all you want. Yeah, it's oh my god. They 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 always love to change the goalpost and everything. See, when you fall victim, when you buy into my mentality it just means that you're not a you're a follower and you're not a leader you're not a you're not a forward thinker you're not really a thinker at all you've been told what to think versus how to think you're not a critical thinker you're just you're just another fucking tadpole in the pond fella they all look alike to me uh like i said man i'd I do march to the beat of my own drum, I guess, for better or for worse, but it keeps me out of a lot of shit around these parts. You're like you like Kramer, no? Where's the ribbon? Where's yeah, the fucking ribbon? He's not wearing the ribbon. I'm here walking with you, no? No, no, <laughs> no, 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 you're not wearing the ribbon. I don't want to wear the ribbon. Yeah, no, I was no. watching Seinfeld today. Um <laughs> Sometimes people take these. These are funny books, man. It's 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 supposed to be fun. Escape when this isn't fun for me anymore. I will just disappear, and you won't. You wouldn't see me. Like just before I was here, everybody, everything, the world will just keep on spinning. The indie comics community will still be doing what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Canceling people. Yeah, canceling people, gay ops, yeah. all that bullshit. Yeah, You'll still be doing it. it. Yeah, but. You just won't have me anymore. But that's fine. I'm not saying that this can't survive without me. That's the most arrogant thing in the world. This was here before me. This will be here after me. But crowdfunding has given everyone a that has a dream and the drive and determination to make their dream a reality. And I did. And none of you could take it away from me. You can't take shit away from me on that. You, all that money is spent anyway. Uh, but you can't, you're not going to, you're not going to shame me into not doing it or to, to, to do something different mm-hmm. because, Hey, I can cut my internet off. I don't give a shit about what you think after all. I don't have to look at my notifications. Sometimes when I see it says, it'll say, uh, 20 plus. That's when I know something's bad. 
mm. that my name's either you know like I've commented and somebody didn't like what I said or something. <laughs> uh, which yeah. go figure, whatever, don't care. I don't delete. I don't delete tweets unless it's just that bad of a uh, grammatical error, error, error that I can't stomach it. You know, because that's the writer in me. I can't. Yeah. I can't let that. I can't. People be like, "Oh, this guy can't even speak English." I, mean, yeah, I do the same it. thing, man. That's got to go. Gotta go. It's, it's tender, guys, because it's getting late. Yeah, man. <laughs> Sorry. No worries. Okay, we man. did have a good time talking to you, man. Hopefully, you can yeah. come back and visit us again. Um, oh yeah. Know, Sooner than later, when maybe yep. when you launch the the third part or before that, just to you know, just to chat, man, just to talk. Yes, it's good to that'd hear. be great. I love to just from someone on. that has as much passion and 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 gravitas as the rest of us over here. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about the gravitas, but I try. <laughs> no, nah, I like it. I like it. I'm telling you, just like Krieger said, I like the cut of your jib, sir. So, yep. but yeah, so pick up the mythicals before it goes out of style. Friday is your last day, right? Yep. Okay. So you, everybody right. has roughly around 72 hours. There you go. Yep. Yeah. 72 hours to pick it up. I'm uh, looking forward to my copy as well. But uh, let's keep in touch, sir. We'll keep, uh, you know, we'll keep yep. writing See you them. Out there. And Craiger, thanks, man. Craiger, yes, thank sir. you, man. Everybody have a good night. Everybody say good night. Good night. Excelsior, guys. Mm-hmm.